Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street TV. Isn't it going to be a fabulous day today? Because I am joined by the one and only Cara Ackerman later. But we've got lots to share, lots to see, lots to look at. And if I can't get through everything, because we've got a lot on the show, do remember it's always on the website, so you can always have a look and it's available to pre-order, which is always good to know, isn't it? But let's start with our early morning early bird. Now this is, it doesn't look much, it's just cream. But what it is, is bosal. It's bosal double-sided, which means it's got an adhesive on both sides. Absolutely fabulous when you want to do anything like bag making, table mats, table runners, anything like that. It's a low-tack glue on both sides. And then you can use bias binding around the outside edges. The pack here we've got 9.99 is a half a metre, which is 150 centimetres wide. So half metre for 9.99. Now if you need a metre, if you're going to use it for quilting or any bigger, bigger projects, then just order multiples and it will be cut specially for you. But it's our special offer at 9.99 per half metre. Double sided. And I love, I love this bosal. I'm quite a new convert actually. I've only been using it for about a year and a half. Um, I really like it. It's really easy to sew. It's quite spongy and bouncy, so things like applique on it give it real definition. But also, when you're making it for bags and things like bags, they stand up. They hold their shape. So it really is very, very useful uh, wadding to have. 
And as I say, this is a um, double-sided adhesive. It's a low-tack adhesive on both sides of it. So it's really easy to use. And you just put your fabric on top, wrong side down, iron it in place, and then you can do your uh, quilting or free motion stitching or applique, whatever, on top of that afterwards. So a really lovely thing to have. Get this in your box. And you are saving two pounds per half metre today. So if you're buying a metre, you're effectively saving four pounds. Um, and don't forget, post and packing, you just pay it the once, 3 95 and that will last you all day. So if you then come back and buy something else in a bit later on, another show, that 3 95 is definitely going to be enough. Now, I said this is by half metre, but don't forget, I also said, oh, I'm just going to trip up with a chair behind me. Um, it is that wide, 150 centimetres wide. So a metre of that will be very, very useful. Two metres even better. Have it in your stash. You will use it. You'll use it for bag making, for cushion covers, for quilting, all sorts of different projects. Things like table mats and um, place mats would be really useful. There's little coasters. You can just see. It's not, it's, not, it's not much to look at, really. It really isn't, but it has got fusible on both sides of it. You can, if you don't, you don't need to use the fusible. I've actually used this in a bag that I've made and I, I had double sided, but I only fused it to one side because it is low tack. So you do need to stitch as well, but you don't have to use the fusible at all. You can actually just sew it. So that's up to you entirely. It's just, it's helped sort of hold it in place if you wish to use that. But also, of course, as well as this, and as I say, it's, it's not much to look at, but it's not supposed to be because it's inside. It's a useful thing that goes on the inside. And when you get the inside of a project right, the outside will look a lot better. Now let's look at some Facebook messages whilst we um, have a look at this here. We've got a lot of people who've joined us. So hello, Laura, Hilary, Kay, Margaret, Justine, Valerie. There's lots watching here. Thank you very much for that. Um, looking forward to showing you some really lovely things today. Got some really fabrics to look at. Susan says, good morning, Wendy and crew. Oh, so Kim, Kim says, lovely bright morning here in Derbyshire. That's good. It was a bit sort of overcast here when we arrived this morning. Not sure what it's going to be like. Um, I believe it might be raining up north, so we don't want that. Stay in, watch TV. This is the thing to do. So as well as this lovely early bird offer, of course, we do also have the panel of the week. Now, if you've been watching this week, you will have seen this already. If not, if this is your first one, have a look at this. So if you know, you should probably know by now we're doing this every week. We're doing a new panel. It, um, it, it might be small charm pack size. It might be stripes. It might be fat quarters, but it's a panel and it'll be different every week. This week, our panel, I can be find it hard to open it up properly on the desk here. This is half. This is half of it. So basically, you've got four fat quarters, but they are huge fat quarters, not your usual size. Can you see? This is one of them. If I just move that slightly out of the way, that's coming later. Then I can. So you can see one side. This is so. This is one. So this is the sort of stars. And they're called fat quarters, but I promise you, these are huge. Let me measure to show what I mean. <laughs> Kat's talking like she's the panel. She's so much more than a fat quarter. So this is 27, 27 and a half inches, appro I mean, it's approximately, because I'm measuring it uh, roughly. 27 and a half inches by 19 and a half. And that's, that's, that's one of the four prints on here. The next one, if I move it along, is this one here. So again, it's the stars, but it's in the reverse. So it's on the sort of um, very pale blue background with the blue stars all over it. You can use these for all sorts of things. I mean, things like cushion backs, linings, you can do patchwork with them. There's a cushion behind me, actually, which I, it's, it's not this fabric. I'm just going to grab it because I looked at this and I thought, oh, look, this panel could be done in something like that. So this has obviously been on one of the shows before. It's lovely, isn't it? But I mean, like, that's not these fabrics, but it could be. So there's a lot you can do with this. 
flip it over and it's a lovely cotton as well. So now we have, um, these are like the, the galaxy systems, aren't they? Star systems, constellations, <laughs> that's what they are. <laughs> Star constellations. Oh, it says here, look, it says the measurements, 70 by 50, 27.5 times 19.6 inches for each of the four panels. And it's called Starry Night, printed exclusively for us. So this is just for us. And it will go up in price on Sunday after midnight. And it will go up to 19 99 At the moment, this is 12 99 And then if we look at the other side, so this is the, so again, you've got sort of the dark blue. And then on the other half of this side, I'm having to do it in four pieces because it's so big, we have this one. So again, it's the same sort of idea. So you've got some moons, stars, some constellations. It's just funny. I mean, you'd, yes, you make you think of bedrooms for this, don't you? Think of sort of cushions for the bedroom. I mean, even you know, you could do you could do curtains. You could do patched curtains. It would be lovely. Or a blind, a roller blind. Anything like that you could do. What about some drawstring bags to put some of their shoes and things in or their toys in? My, my boys used to love putting everything in bags. Go for a sleepover, you could do something like this. Lots of people, I had a sleepover last night. Nothing wrong with the, nothing wrong with it. It was in a hotel actually, yeah, I've got to say, on my own actually, but you know, let's, let's not go there. But, uh, yeah, so uh, very nice, very comfortable. But yes, there's lots of reasons to make up little bags, little cushions, um, all sorts of things that you can do with this. And it's a big one. If I try and open this out and show you what it looks like opened out, you can see what I mean by big. So it's very useful. I've gone, I've disappeared. I'd like to be able to say I could just go and go, but uh, I can't. Do you remember that? Bewitched. Just used to wiggle your nose and you'd be gone. So that is our panel of the week. So you've had a chance to buy it already. It's now Thursday, so you've got another four days at this price, but it'll only be while it lasts. So if we do run out, then that will be it. And if we don't run out, by Sunday, it will go up. Oh, Morag has just said it's just stopped snowing in Dumfries. The weather's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely crazy. And then Tanis has said, what did she say? Oh, lovely nose. Yes, thank you. Do you like my art here? Look at this one. These are my, oh, the, my nose. It it's a good thing we've got floral fabric today. I've got to just, oh, you've just got to see my nails. Look at that. Isn't it lovely? I have to say thank you to Julia at Nail Elegance for that. She is such an artist. She really is. So thank you, Julia. I, oh, yes, they're on my own nails. They're not false nails, but uh, that, that's why they're so short, because my nails have got into a horrible condition. So it's nice to have them done. Let's do the menu for today, and then we can move on to all these lovely fabrics we've got to show you. So th today we're starting with Moda Homegrown Salsa Collection. I'm not sure if it's with or without. Um, and then we are going to look at the Helen Newton's Cushion Launch with Cara Ackerman. I've had a quick look at some of these patterns that we've got coming up. They're absolutely fascinating, really fantastic. And you can buy the pattern or you can buy a kit. Aren't these amazing? I think they're absolutely lovely. And then after that, we have got, it's a secret, here it is, Out of Africa fabric. That sounds rather nice, doesn't it? So we've got some really more, some lovely fabric. It's going to be a really fabric-y day today. And then back with Cara, with uh, Helen Newton's Cushion Roundup. So more cushion ideas there. Uh, but you can make bags out of them as well. You don't have to be restricted to a cushion. And then at 12 o'clock, we're going to have a whole lo load of designer kits revisited. So we'll be looking at lots of the designer kits we've had before. So be so girl, living in loveliness, lots of things that you've seen before, but you might have missed out on or they've sold out and they've come back in, etc. So lots of things for you to look at in a while. So do stay with me. Oh, and let's, let's just go on to the website to show how you can do this if you are new to us. So what you do is you go on to the website, which is www.sewingstreet.com and then click watch live. Once you've clicked watch live, you can scroll down and see all of the items we are going to have on the shows today. 
so you can pre-order if you want to absolutely guarantee you get it um, people are already doing so because some of these lovely new fabrics look absolutely amazing fabrics we're going to do in a minute are in bundles or by the half meter so you have the option we've got some lovely extra wide backing fabrics so i love the jade we've got some books some good old debbie shaw books as well as a sewing machine reference tool book which i know has been popular i reviewed that a while ago for a magazine nice book to have around helps you look after your machine and lots of lot of tools and things as well of course um, we're doing a plique so you've got a plique mat um, plique is also good with stitch and tear so we've got that we've got quilting gloves because Cara's going to do some free motion we've got a hoop because she's going to do embroidery so we've tried to make sure that on the website today if we don't get through them on the show they're all there all things that will go beautifully with the ideas the projects and things that which we are working with today look at it all my goodness oh and look at that so it's not a baker hat it's a chelsea hat but if you want to make a hat aka great british sewing bee that's the one for you so that's going to be coming on later on today did you did you all watch it yesterday it was good it was good i have to say for the first time in this series the upcycle challenge wasn't too bad that's my personal opinion i don't like the upcycle challenge i don't think it does the upcycling any favors but last night it was actually not too bad at all but yes made some great gowns of course if you want to um sort of interact and things please do have a look at facebook live as well i have got um, a tablet here that i can have a look at and see messages as they come up and of course cat will say um, so that's sewingstreet.tv or of course you can email in which is studio at sewingstreet.com right let's start with our new fabric bundle so i'm going to start with this one here now, we were supposed to have, you might have read on the menus that we were going to have Dawn Taylor with us today. Unfortunately, she can't be here, um, but she did send us some of the things that she has made out of these so that you can see some ideas that she's done. And actually, they come from the books that we've also got on the show. So look at that. All works out so beautifully well. So um, sorry about Dawn not being here, but um, we will see her back shortly, I'm sure. Oh, we've had a message from Jeanette. Oh, it's going to go across the bottom of the screen, so I've glasses back on again. Um, morning. It's the, yeah, the weather is chaotic. Thunder, lightning and hell. All day yesterday. Where are you from? County Durham. Wow, doesn't sound so good, does it? I'm trying to think what it was like for us yesterday. I don't think I had any. I think I had rain, but I don't think I had thunder. Yes, perfect, perfect day to stay indoors, perfect day to stay indoors, sew and craft. That's what it's for. So that, this is our bundle. So this bundle here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half metres. So it's three and a half metres in total. 51.99. Um, these are motor fabrics. And let me open one of them. Look at this. This is all from the homegrown salsa range. <laughs> a bit hot, it says. <laughs> look at that, look at those peppers. Or chilies, are they peppers or chilies? Chilies. Oh, sweet peppers. They could, could be, I was thinking, you know those chilies that you can, I mean, I've never had one, these, are they dragon chilies or something that, you know, the absolute hottest chilies you can ever have? No, I like spice, but not, not hugely, hugely hot. But this is, oh no, my, my, my hottest is a Danzac. That's about as far as I go. And I normally ask for that to be medium. But look at that. I think this is lovely, isn't it? Lovely print. With, we will be, we'd be so this is, this is part of the bundle, remember. We will be showing it as, part, as a half metre. So if you wanted to buy more to make, as uh, Kat's just said to me, she would like to make a shirt, then great. Wait until we do it by the half metre and then you can buy multiples. So there it is in the white, but we've also got it in the black. This is nice. I think the thing when you put it on black is it does make the colours really stand out, doesn't it? They really sort of pop. Yeah, you can really see. See, I didn't really see the spirals. They are on the white, 
but isn't that, that just kind of really pops out at you doesn't it and even though it's a black background because of those bright colors it's still nice and summery you can imagine so a salsa dance going on with this can't you it would really look lovely the swishing skirts as you dance around or yes or you could do something like dawn's made look at this this is one of the things that she's made and she's used this fabric and this is in um, Debbie Shaw's summer collection I believe it is and what this is oh so outdoors this is velcroed up so you put all your um, barbecue tools in here like that and then you can carry them whether it's from indoors to outside or whether you're going to one of these sort of parks that you can hire a barbecue you've got all your tools nightly nice and neatly packed away so that's a really nifty idea and that's obviously using one of these just put it over there this is really lovely so these these are things that you can make as gifts I mean sometimes you know for him indoors I mean it's going to be Father's Day soon isn't it sometimes making something like this for the barbecue tools would be a really nice unusual gift because what do you what do you buy for the man who has everything so that would be a really nice idea now you can also have the same print this is in this kit you've got the same print again but this time with a red background so this is red this is red, oh, red hot this one so it's exactly the same print but this time you've only got sort of two, two colors you haven't got all of the colors here so you've sort of got yellows and greens on this one so again it's beautiful I'm only opening half opening it so this is this is a half meter look at those lovely colors and the swirls again I think this is really beautiful I'm not sure I think the black is still my favorite of these three but you get all of them in the bundle you get all of these in the bundle you get seven pieces all together half a meter of each and then this one is a lovely stripe you could make a big picnic quilt. You could make, you could patchwork a big quick, <laughs> sorry, not, put my teeth back in, a quick quilt. Look at this, beautiful stripe here. This, so they're all toned together as well. So if you look at them, they do work well together, which means you can, of course, mix them up. You can make an apron out of this, Elliot, indeed you could. It's a lovely soft cotton as well. And look, look at this one here. <laughs> you can, he wants to have an applique saying kiss the chef on it this is so this is actually again it's one of the projects that's on the outdoor living from I haven't got the book here have I oh yes I have right next to me so that's on that is on the website the outdoor living book by Debbie Shaw this is reverse applique that's using that fabric so this is really lovely this is just a, a lovely little placemat so here's this one so we thanks to Dawn for making these samples gives us it's nice to have ideas of what you can do with these so that's that one and then I'm going to go straight for this one because this is the other half of that this is the other I'm not playing favorites it's just it's the other bit of that table a placemat isn't this lovely but I mean you know imagine you could do an apron out of this this would be lovely as an apron and again it would be lovely for an apron for him indoors wouldn't it because it's not girly it's really lovely. You could use Odie coat on it to make it more waterproof if you wanted to. You could make a tablecloth for outside if you wanted to. Um, there's all sorts of things that you can do with this. I just think it's quite good fun. And as I say, this is look at this is what uh, Dawn has done. It's getting lost in there, isn't it? Just made this lovely placemat. So really nice because it's nice to have nice things for outside dining as well. That's really lovely. You could, I mean, you know, if you want it for your kitchen, there's no reason why you can't. If you like covers on things, if you've got a food mixer and you want to make a cover for it, or if you uh, make tea and you make tea in a pot and you want a tea cosy, you can be a bit funky with your covers. Look at this. This is the same one, but this time with a red background. So again, it really punches out. I just love all the little messages on it two pounds of fresh tomatoes this is, this is your yeah, imagine taking this as your but you could make a shopper out of it couldn't you you could make a shopping tote out of this really easily this would be lovely so in the bundle you're getting half a meter of each of these seven different pieces if you buy multiples 
you can obviously, they come pre-cut. Oh, yes, if you buy, sorry, if you buy multiples of the bundle, they're already pre-cut ready. So you'll get half a metre times however many bundles you buy. If you wanted to buy one of these as a bigger piece, then you, we'll show those in a minute because that's when you buy them uh, by the half metre, but you put in multiples in your basket. And then finally in this collection, look at this one. So again, it's the same design, but with the black background. This makes this one really, I think this really looks lovely. And I, I think all the wording really stands out beautifully. Oven gloves, oven mitts. This would be really nice. So that bundle is 51 99 But let's do it now by the half metre. So that's the bundle. 51 99 gives you all seven pieces, uh, half a metre of each. This time we're going to st I'll stay on this one because it's here. For 7 49 you can buy this one on its own by the half metre. So if you did decide that you wanted, let's say, make an apron and an oven glove or something, you'd want a metre, maybe a metre and a half. So then you would buy three units, which would, you would come in one piece. So that's really lovely. The salvage, you, yes, you've got the little colourful chilies on. We, we, you, know, you should always cut your salvages off and not use them because they are often um, woven more tightly than the rest of the fabric and they can distort a seam. But we've said before that some of these salvages are so beautiful, cut them off carefully and keep them and then you can make something out of the salvages. That's really sort of using every bit of fabric. But this is a really lovely one and it is, it's a lovely soft cotton as well. It feels gorgeous. It is motor quality, you can feel it, you can feel the quality. That Yes, I mean it's called quilting weight, um, but you know, you quilters can't have it all. Actually, it's just as good for dressmaking and it's lovely and soft. Look at this. I think this is really sweet. I like the red again, because the colours really pop out of it. So again, this one is 7.49 for half a metre, but if you decided you wanted two metres, then you just buy four units at 7.49. So it says, we are actually limited at, on all of these at the half metre. So if you are thinking of any of these, um, and I haven't got to you, the one that your, is your favourite yet, do grab it on the website so you don't lose out. That's that one. And then the one that's in white, which is the one that Dawn has used for her placemat. This is nice, this is very fresh looking. So I don't know which of these I prefer, because I think they're all really lovely. They really are. You'd have to buy, well, no, but you see, you'd have to buy lots of bundles. Or, you see, I can see this as a tablecloth. I think the other two are a bit dark for a tablecloth, but this would. And, and if people spill a little bit on it, you're not going to see it, because there's all so much going on. But this would make a lovely outside tablecloth. And of course, if you've got chairs, if you've got a um, dining set outside and you want to make seat covers and things, you could do that with these. And you could actually mix these up. I think you could, you could also, you know, you could make a tablecloth out of this. You could make placemats out of that. You could make seat covers out of that. And they all go together. So they are really lovely. So that's the uh, 749 for the half metre. So if you want two metres, put four units into your bag. Oh, right. All oh, right. Oh, yes, very good idea. So Willow has said she would use the chilies on the selvage here. She would use these to make a ham hanging tab. So you can hang up, so you use oven gloves or anything like that. You could actually make a little hanging tab out of that. You do, I mean, it, it's good to get the most out of fabric and less wet waste is always good news. Chilies on red. Look at this one. This is nice. Chilies on red. The, oh, if you, if you make, yes, if you make your own jams and chutneys and things like that and you have put them in your own jam jars, you can make these lovely little cloth covers, can't you, to go on the top of them. But even if you make, if you know, just making like a, a wine bottle bag or something like that, you can make it out of something that's fun like this. I keep talking about these um, selvages, but do remember you might not get the whole selvage 
with all the chilies on your piece because they're probably on a meter and you've got these so if you're buying a half meter you might get a bit of it so you might not get the whole selvage <laughs> Elliot wants to make a chili con carne. Do you know I haven't had chili con carne for ages and ages and ages. I would like one too. I think that sounds a really good idea. Chilies on black. Yes, I like this. You're thinking shirts. Are we, are we thinking John? Any <laughs> shirts? We keep trying to dress John with all these different prints that come out. Does he actually say that when he's on here? Does he say, "Oh, I can see a shirt in this," or is it just us saying that we can see his shirts in this? This is really lovely. He must have so many. He must have a whole walk-in wardrobe of shirts. This is lovely, isn't it? I mean, this time we've got little, little colours and the spots and things. It just all sort of leaps out at you because it's on that black background. Very, very, very uh, pretty. Very party. This is to take you into the evening. And then the final chilly one is on the white. Oh, red's been most popular so far. That's interesting. I love red. And this is the, see again, this just looks so fresh, doesn't it? So yes, if you, you could put those two together, couldn't you? They would look nice together. And again, I'd bring in the stripe for something as well. You could do a mixture. The stripe kind of goes with everything, doesn't it? But look at this one, this sort of chilies on their own. We're saying chilies or peppers. I can't remember what we said they were in the end. Oh, chilli pepper. Okay. <laughs> Ca capsicum. What is a capsicum something else? Oh, right. There's peppers and chilies. Okay, that's what we've got here. And swirly bits and little spots. So it's all everything going. Isn't it beautiful? Lovely, lovely soft cotton as well. And finally, we have got the stripe, which is a great comb uh, combiner something you can put with. I mean, there's nothing wrong with putting it, using it on its own, of course, but it does go so well with all of these different prints. This is the stripe. But you could use that. So this is selvage to selvage, so it runs vertically down, but it is quite a stable cotton, so you could have it horizontal if you wished. So this is really lovely. This is a lovely stripe. It's a beautiful, it's just so lovely and soft. Lovely and soft. Again, it would make a lovely garment. Um, but I think, as Kat's just said, and said, you could make binding with this. This would look really nice. Binding or pockets. Or as uh, Dawn has done, she's done it as a reverse applique. And the reverse applique, basically, it, you cut out the top layer to show the fabric underneath. So that looks really lovely. So that's the collection. So you can buy it as a collection or you can buy it by the piece, which means that you can buy multiples. We have some remaining on the whole bundle. So do grab that if you want the whole bundle, which is 59.99. Sorry, 51. Oh, I was trying to I just put I've just put yeah, just putting a little commission. <laughs> so 51.99 and you get all seven pieces which is really lovely now i want to um, bring in the so out so the outdoor living one yes yes outdoor living this is the outdoor living one so this is the one that we have some of these projects that i've just shown you in um, this is one of our lovely debbie shaw books so you know it's good quality the projects are good quality the photography is absolutely sublime um, lots and lots of lovely, lovely projects. In fact, we've had this little one before on the show. But these are really fun things to make. We, <laughs> we are going to be outside soon. Just plan ahead, plan ahead. So not only have you got the projects, of course, what you do have with these books are useful stitches and how-tos on creating various things, like bias binding and the stitching, applying a magnetic clasp, inserting a zip into a seam piping um, and then you go on to some of the projects so a pom-pom tablecloth and those hopefully those pom-poms will help hold that tablecloth down when it's outside and here's look at this the table pad the reverse applique heart map which is the one that dawn has made so that would look lovely it looks lovely in those peppers 
Um, all clear instructions on how to do this. Plant pot covers. I love this idea, particularly if you use that odicot to give them a bit of waterproofing. Do you mean you can use your old pots and don't have to worry because you've covered them beautifully? Bunting. Bunting along your fence just makes the garden look cheerful. If it's anything like mine and I struggle to grow, flip, grow things and keep them growing, this would actually add the colour that I need to have in my garden. My sister Karen's coming down uh, next week and she's a real gardener. She's an amazing, amazing gardener and artist. And um, she's going to come down and give me some advice and we're going to go to a garden centre and she's going to help me choose plants. Rather than just look at the pretty colours, she's going to tell me what would grow where. So <laughs> this is going to be really, really useful. Look at this. This is the bunting. As I said before, you could do cushion cushion pads for your outside uh, chairs because you want to I mean we have to until next week but I mean we want to be able to sit in the garden anyway it's you know it's it is something that's really nice picnic mat you know go on a picnic I mean we are still looking at possibly staying in this country for holidays this year aren't we so you know make things to make it more enjoyable I like that picnic mat which the the strap that holds it in Another, look at this, very simple cushion. Add big, bold contrast buttons and you've got a really lovely project. But it's a simple one to make. Or indeed, you can have ties. A tent, a teepee. This is fun. Kids love to play in teepees. How to do it there. Bolster cushion with knots, very simple again, easy to make. So all these projects are nice and quick and easy to make. Look stunning when you use good quality fabrics. Bean bag stool. I don't think I'll get back up again though. And then box cushions with piping. So you're learning techniques as you go along. So not only are you making these, I think we've got that actually, not quite finished. So I've got the bolster cushion here. Um, which Dawna's made and she's got the ribbon trim and she's got the contrast ends but I haven't got the nice ribbon bows at the end of it but that's quite good you can put that you know if you've got a chair with a back and you can put that in the small of your back which can be nice if you uh, if you find you sort of suffer a little bit from your backache and here we are look at mitered tablecloth very nice beautiful mitered cloth that looks lovely again so these fabrics we've been looking at just now would go beautifully with these Lots to see in here, lots to do. And this is 10.49. All these projects for 10.49. Picnic caddy, look. Apron, there's, there's the barbecue apron, so you've got that to make. So, and, and here's the barbecue uh, caddy that I showed you. Some really useful projects. Beautifully done. Let's look at some more of the fabrics. Which ones are we going for? The panels. These ones. Let's start with this because this is lovely. Looked at this earlier. We're thinking, this is, this is outdoors, look at this. Now, do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that this would actually be, can you see it all? Because that's the middle of the panel, what you can see there. And then underneath, it's got seed pockets, uh, sort of seed packets, I should say. But you could make something for the shed. You could make something for your seeds. You could make a, a wall hanging and you could make pockets and then you put your seeds in the pockets. This is really lovely, isn't it? Well, again, you could, if you cut those ones off and use this as the centre of your apron, you could make a really nice apron. There's lots you can do. So this is $9.99 for the panel. If I just bring that down, can you see that bit? So those ones. And then we have two complementary fabrics to go uh, with this, if you wish, because you can, you can choose, this is just one on its own. And then if you want to mix and match a bit, look at this, this is, this is beautiful. So again, fruit and veg going on here. Have I got that upside down? No, I think it's, I think it's multi-directional actually. So I've got tomatoes and carrots and onions, beetroot, 
um, what's that? Artichoke, artichoke, garlic, I can't think what, oh, courgettes. This is lovely, isn't it? This would be a lovely tote bag. This would be so, if somebody's got an allotment, you make something for them for their allotment. This is really lovely. I love this print actually as well. And again, it's this lovely, lovely fabric. So it's really nice. So this is for 7.49 for the half metre. If you wanted more than half a metre, um, if you wanted to do a bigger project, of course, you can just buy multiples and then you can make what you like. This, oh, all right. So this final one, grab it now. We have a metre and a half only left. So if you want this, that's three times in your basket and you get a metre and a half. It's a half metre piece at 7.49. And again, it's got all of those lovely veg and fruit and things. You call it, because these are fruit, aren't they? These tomatoes. So all of them on here. So it's really something great to make for the garden, for somebody who's got an allotment, for somebody who loves gardening. You can make lots and lots of things from bags to cushions to wall hangings for your seeds, lots of things to make or indeed for the kitchen. It it's just cries out to be made into some fun projects. Really lovely. Th we are going to now look at... So what did you want me to look at? Oh, the design roll. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Hold on, I couldn't see it. That's because you put it over there. <laughs> she does this up to me. Am I allowed to unroll it? Because <laughs> I love these. These are, this is a, so this is red, black and white. This is a design one. Now these basically two and a half inch wide strips. How many have we got in a bundle? 40 in this bundle, 40 strips for 29.99. So that's a really handy price for this. And I'm just going to see if I can unwind that. Look, oh. Got it in two. Let me put it over there. Look at these. So all sort of floral prints. Obviously all coordinating. So really pretty. Got two of each of those. <laughs> Elliot's just said good luck with getting it back into the world. I will try. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm not going to unroll that end because it's the same. But let's look at this lot as well. So we have some more here. So again, it looks like we have two of each of these prints. 20 different designs all together. They're really lovely. So you can do so much. I mean, you can do, you can do the simplest of things, which is a, um, a, a strip quilt. And you just join them end to end, short end to short end. And then you bring that up and join them. And then you join them and then you join them. It can take this about an hour to do a quilt top. And you don't try and pick them. You do them random. And it can look really lovely. Or you can use them as bindings. Or you can use them as sashing. Or you can make uh, striped bags. I've seen really lovely bags that are done in stripes. There's lots you can do with these. Look at this, I like this one, that's nice. So they all coordinate with each other, doesn't matter which, and of course you get all 40 strips together. And I'm not going to try and roll them up now, <laughs> I'll do that later. <laughs> 29.99 for this designer roll of all these beautiful strips. So that is one. And we have next to that, we have some red and white ribbons. Just this little ribbon set. They are 10 millimetres wide, one centimetre wide, so that's three eighths of an inch. And you get 12, and each of them are a metre. So you've got three of actually four different designs. So they're just useful to have. Oh, and you've got this little spare bit on the top as well that I'm sure you can find some use for. So some really nice little ribbons just to add to a project, to finish it off, to add a trim. Hanging loops. You could use these for hanging loops. You could use this if you're doing bunting. You could have these on your bunting. These are really pretty. Just to add a little bit of trim, a bit of something. And these are $6.99. So really pretty ribbons. 
Thermalam. I'm looking. Is it this one here? It is. So if you are thinking of making um, table mats, place mats, coasters, it's a good idea to use Thermolam. Um, and the name Thur, Thermo is for thermal, so that's why you know it's heat resistant. So Thermolam is a good one for your table mat, place mats, etc. It is lovely and soft. So, it, oh, it can go in the microwave. Okay. It hasn't got any metal running through it, so it's not got like the insulator one, you know, when, with the silvery backing. So I don't know why you'd put it in the microwave, but you can put it in the microwave if you wish. So if you did a mug hug or something like that with it, you could then, you could microwave it. But it is, it's a lovely soft one. It's, it's a nice sort of wadding, but this is specifically to, um, to sort of hold in the heat. So if you put a hot plate on top of your table mat, it should not go through to the table and scald the table. So it's also good if you were making, um, and some people do, if they make like a casserole cover um, and they're taking a, a hot casserole. If you're doing like an American dinner party and you take a hot casserole round to somebody else's house, it's nice if you've got it in a specially made casserole cover with thermo lining. lining. I like American suppers. Everybody puts something into it, brings their own. It's particularly nice if they take their dirty washing home, as, dirty washing up home as well. <laughs> Now we've got a fat quarter pack, which is absolutely fabulous. Look at this. It's not a fat quarter pack, it's, it's a stash in itself. Look at that. I'm going to open it. 99.99. But you get 30 fat quarters. So if you divide 30 by four, what do you get? I'm trying to work out how many meterage that is. To get <laughs> so these are all of the lovely colours. So it's seven and a half metres in total. And because it's 99.99, it qualifies for split pay if you wish. So you could make two payments of 49.99 uh, rather than the single payment. And if you do that, you have first payment is taken today and you get your um, pack sent to you immediately and then your second payment is taken in a month's time so that's 6th of june oh i don't say that 6th of june and then the next layer look now these are all fat quarters and they sort of we're on that same kind of theme look we've got little um watering cans little vegetables on here aubergine carrots not sure what that one is peppers and then coordinated fabrics to go with it. So if you want to make anything, any sort of patchworking, quilting, anything smaller projects where fat quarters all you need, look at those. And then the next, there's a lot of those. The next lot. I think these are all just really pretty. Oh, I'm going to run out of space. I'm going to start putting them on the ends. Can you see? They're lovely. And they feel great too. They're really lovely, lovely fabrics. You've got dark navies. You've got soft greys. You've got the lovely reds. I'm running out of space on my table fabrics here. All got the watering cans again, but in the grey. Oh, and the lovely bits of fruit. So if you like, you know, th this is such a lovely collection. Um, you can never have too many fat quarters. You really can't. I like the fact you've got a mixture here of floral, spot. There's almost a check here with a, some little floral. That's a really pretty one too. So that's, look at, look at what you get, all of that. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Thirty. Cat could have just told me that, but she just let me do it. Thirty. It does say it in the graphics. Yes, well, I'm struggling to see those today. <laughs> I did say it as well. Yeah, but it went in and went out again. But look at that. Thirty. So seven and a half metres altogether for ninety-nine, ninety-nine. Thirty fat quarters. There are so many projects that you can make with that. 
all sorts of things. And they go so beautifully together. And, that, and I think that's the other thing is when you're trying to decide on what fabrics to use with what, what patchwork to use, etc., it can sometimes take you so long just choosing your fabrics. This is chosen for you. So you know that you can put these together. So we can just, just pick out those, or not that one because it's the same. Let's pick out that one. So you've got a floral and a check and a watering can and you can make something with those. They just go together. Oh, I could put that one. And that goes together beautifully with that. The grey would go beautifully. So what, it doesn't matter which combination, you'll find that they will work together. And the soft grey again. So you could keep one sort of palette. You could keep it all soft greys. But you've got enough there to make lots of choices. So really lovely pack there, 99.99 for 30 fat quarters, which equates to seven and a half metres. Let's do another one of Debbie Shaw's books. Um, I'm just going to grab, well, I, I'm going to go for the summer collection because this is one that when Debbie was here with me, she was having. Now, this is one that has actually got it's a lot of the projects in here are from previous books and they've all been gathered together um, to make one sort of big book. So it's a nice big fat what uh, summer collection, 40 projects in here, 40 for 14.99, of which five are new for this book. So even if you've got the other books with the other projects in, just buying it for the five new ones is worth it at 14.99 for five new projects. So you've got lots and lots of lovely, and it's as we always expect with Debbie, look at this, you've got everything. I mean, you've got a bottle bag, but not just a bottle bag. We've got a little pocket in the front, which you could put your cork in or whatever else you wanted to. Metal frame purse. And this is lovely with the, lay, with the lace on it. You obviously do it with whatever you want. This is really beautiful. Lots of things. We were talking about having jar covers, look, with, with chilies. You've got the jar covers. You've got table runners. So again, we're talking about the thermo lamb, but you could use that. And this is lovely. And I love the way it's got um, angled stripes so that the, the stripes aren't all nice and neat and regimented. They're angled. Not only does it make it easier, of course, but it makes it look a little bit different, a little bit quirky, a bit modern. So these would look lovely in some of these chilli fabrics we've been looking at. A vase sleeve. That's different, unusual. That's a tea cosy. We talked about tea cosies. Look at that one. That's a very different looking tea cosy. You can see it's got a drawstring, but it's, it seems a shame to cover that beautiful teapot. But if you want to keep your tea warm, bunting. You've got to have bunting. Tray mat. If you've got somebody who likes to have a tea tray, or maybe somebody who is in bed a lot because of illness, if you present their meal on a nice tray with a nice tray mat, it shows a lot of care and attention. Posy can. There's just so many sort of fun things to do here, including a little rucksack to keep the little ones amused. Put some crafty things in there, something they can do in the car so they don't keep saying, are we there yet? Little pinny so they can help. I love this idea, having a cushion with a pocket in the back. So it's, a, it's your bedtime cushion with your reading book. And then it's got the straps there to hold the book open if you want. So it's a really lovely, lovely idea that. And look at this, it's with the little teddies in it. Little bag so you can put your little family in. Oh, we had a lot of messages about this on the day that we first did it. Isn't it gorgeous, a little caravan caddy. Some really great ideas. So, of course, and all the, as usual, we have in the, I'm saying this, I'm going to quickly check. We have how to do various techniques that you're going to need. So it's always useful to have those techniques. So if you go to a project and you think, how on earth do I put bias binding on? Here it is at the front of the book, giving you very detailed, illustrated instructions on how to do it. So that is a lovely book as well. That's 14 
so the final one we're going to do because we i mean we, there is more so do look on the website there are more books um and there are we've got as i said we've got the extra wide backing fabric we might try and bring them to you later but do have a quick look at this one now this one um is a troubleshooting guide to loving your sewing machine again we only ever get this in small quantities it's 1949 but what it has done, what it does in here is it gives you, and it's very nice and easy. I love the spiral binding there because it means it's easy to prop it open next to your sewing machine while you're having a look. It's got the different types of rotary hook. Um, one of the, this, is, this is definitely something that I totally agree with Bernie on is it's hardly ever the tension. People always think the stitching's not right change the tension no 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 leave your tension alone look for something else first and this will tell you there are things that can happen like burrs on the hook and that's when the needle just clips the hook um, and then you start getting snap threads because actually it keeps uh, getting caught on that so you've got all things like that um, and it's very very clear showing you how a stitch should look remember right righty tighty lefty loosey so that's when you're turning the screw to uh, to um, adjust the tension. Personally, I avoid adjusting the tension of these um, bobbins. Try and get a second one, a separate one. So if you're doing something like bobbing work where you're putting a thicker thread in the bobbin, you don't want to put it through your regular tension because it can put it out. So if you have a second one of these, you can use that for your adjustments and then you can leave your normal sewing one exactly as it should be. But this is, will tell you all sorts of things, very, very clearly illustrated telling you how the presser foot's evolved, how it's working, so you can understand it. And also, this will help you maintain your machine. Because very often, when your machine stops sewing properly, it is purely, it needs a good clean, it needs a new needle, it's, you know, it's things like that. And you'll know how to do that here. You can see when things are going wrong, it's telling you, this is what it looks like, then do this to make it right. So it's, it's a lovely, clear book to follow. And I like the way he's actually done different types of machines as well so it's not just computerized it's not just your basic models it's covering all sorts very and i love the, the fact that it's really big illustration so you can really see and because it's spiral bound you can lay it flat and it makes it very easy to to look at it's, you'll, find it, you'll find it useful, you'll find it educational. I mean, I know a lot about sewing machines. I've worked with so all the sewing machine companies for many, many years, but you can still learn. You do not know, nobody knows everything. And it's, it's, um, so it's a very good guide to have with you. Very, very useful. And as I say, I love the fact that the illustrations kind of show the detail. Because it's all very well somebody saying to you, oh, your needle's got this on it. But you can't see that on most needles. You have to see them in sort of great big illustrations like this to actually see what that needle's doing. I wonder, he must have had big ones made, unless he, unless he got shrunk or unless he's got very tiny hands. <laughs> he's that, it's that film, wasn't it, where they all got shrunk down and they lived in this world. No, it wasn't The Borrowers, no, it was a modern day film. It was a way of, um, because we were getting overpopulated, they kind of shrunk everybody down. And they all lived in this beautiful utopian world, but sh they were all shrunk. But yes, anyway, that's digressing. So it's very clear, very clear on how to do everything. And I like the fact it's got troubleshooting along the way as well. So that if you find things are wrong, you can see why they're wrong and how to put it right. Oh, it's called Downsizing, the film I was referring to. So it's quite good fun to watch if you fancy something different. So what do you get on here? You not only do you get sewing machine advice, you get all the books, you get all the fabrics, you even get a film guide. <laughs> what more could you want? So love it. I, lo I just love it. I love the way it, it's explaining what parts of the machine are doing and therefore how to adjust it to get it right. So a very good book to have. So do grab this if you haven't done because we do tend to sell out very, very quickly. 
So after the break, when I've tried to put my designer role back together, um, we will be welcoming Cara Ackerman, who is going to come here with some of her fabulous cushion makes. And they are absolutely gorgeous. So do join me in just a few minutes. And hopefully with my hair still intact, because I haven't pulled it out trying to do these. See you in just a minute. Hello everyone, my name's Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making. Oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new. And I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it. And you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Welcome back. Wasn't that quick? I didn't actually roll up the designer role. I will do that later. But because Elliot took it off me, was worried. I was worried I was going to panic. But this hour we have fun in the puddles. It's a sewing pattern by Helen Newton. And it's going to be, we're going to have a nice demo by um, Cara Ackerman, who's, I, I think you might have just heard if you were watching in the break then. Um, an extraordinary lady who's been doing sewing malarkey for many a year. <laughs> I think we've known each other probably for Many at least years. 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh dear, same, same old, same old. This is awful, isn't it? But uh, it's lovely. Aren't we lucky to be doing a job that we love um, and something that's a passion with us too? What can you do? So we are making today, wh where's it gone? Oh, that, this one in front of me here. Oh, you've got it on the screen there. Look at that, fun in the puddles. That is so cute. So this is a plique. Now, also on the show, we're going to have a demo from Cara, but also on the show, we do have lots of the bits and pieces that she has used, like an applique mat, um, tearaway stabilising, quilters gloves, um, the, I call them duck 
duck scissors, but uh, they're all on, they're plique scissors. They're all on pre-order. So if we don't actually get to them, do just have a look. And when Cara's using them, we'll try and match them up for you. But first of all, let's start with the bundle. So you can get the bundle, so all the guesswork's taken away. You don't have to worry about it. So the bundle includes half a metre of red, which Cara has used for the back of the cushion. And then this lovely pre-printed panel. We are good at our panels, you know. But it's big. Here we are. We also, well, they, these panels are so big. This, this, is, this is some of it. This is some of the panel. So what you have here is lots of lovely little, they're almost like charm squares, aren't they? Um, but they're different sizes depending on what you need. So these are all of the prints that you're going to use to make this pattern. So you can see, rather than buying fat quarters of each or half a metre of each, you just buy the one panel and then you get, what you do is you get the, uh, you get the um, pattern with this bundle. So you've got, you've got your half a metre of red, you've got the panel with all of the different things and then you get this pattern which of course is very clear instructions including the templates. So you get all of that there. So this panel, so the firstly you've got all of those different patches, so all of these different little pieces, you haven't got to scurry around trying to find things in your remnant box that matches, these all go together beautifully. And as well as, oh and there's the other templates on the other side, which is why a light box is a good idea. Have a look on the pre-order, it's there. And then the other half is this. So this is the border. This has been used as the border. And then these are big panels. So this is your brick wall. And there's plenty here by the looks of it, Cara. Yes. So you'd have quite a bit left. Yes, I was just actually. picking up my little bits and pieces that I've got left. So what we want to try and do today is talk about how else you can use some of the panels. Brilliant. And things, so. Yes, because that, that would be handy. Because it is pl there's plenty here, isn't yes, there? So you definitely. can actually do that. So that's going to look really good. So this is the bundle. So 19.99, you get half a meter of fabric. That's the backing and the panel, and the instructions. So in order to complete the cushion, you will need your cushion pad, and um, possibly you're going to need some wadding or um, stitch and tear for do the applique. But we will come to those as Cara talks about it. Now, you can also buy the instructions on their own. So those are, this is, so that's just the instructions, which is this. So this is 9 99 So that's the instructions on your own. So if you do have plenty of fabric at home and you don't feel you need to get the, um, this lovely panel, then you can just get the instructions for 9 99 Or you get the panel, the half meter, and the instructions for 19 99 I have to say, I know which one I'd go for. I think it's a real deal that is that's absolutely fabulous but you can buy the pattern on your own if you have plenty of fabrics in your stash so that is 9.99 so that's it and that's all i'm going to say carl i'm going to sit but i'll have a coffee but i'll, I'll have water <laughs> I'm going to say over to you, Cara. Can you oh, tell us you all through this? Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hope everybody's fine. And oh, my gosh, what's happened with the weather? I know, it's crazy. This, uh, they must have known. This is why we're doing this panel. <laughs> it really is. Um, it's such a beautiful design from Helen Newton. Um, I'm just amazed where she gets all her ideas from. I know, they're and, stunning, aren't they? And, you know, she takes it a little bit of a step further. And um, what I love is the panel. You can make the cushion. But as she said, there's lots of fabric left over. Um, and it's just the added little bits and pieces. On this particular design, I love the raindrops. Yes. So you've got all the raindrops for the clouds. And, you know, where, the, where one of the children is actually splashing in the puddle, You've got this the splash you know coming up so it's all the added little bits and pieces which is lovely and helen is brilliant at taking you step by step so you know the instructions will take you through from the beginning and if you've never done it before don't be frightened really don't be frightened it's such a wonderful thing and i've done a few of hers now and i'm getting a little bit more confident but it is just a case of having a go come on <laughs> you're a pro we no, know not at in all. the nicest not, possible oh, that <laughs> not at all not at all with um machine and um you know freestyle 
uh, free motion embroidery. Um, it was new to me. Oh, true. Really yes. new to yeah. me. So, but, but you could, if you if you were frightened of doing that, like raindrops and things, you could do those by hand. Definitely, you? and that's the beauty of this is that you can actually. And in the second hour, we're going to talk about sort of hand embellishing and things like that. So, um, you know, you you aren't restricted to just free motion. You can actually do a lot of um, freehand stitching and things like that. If you don't want to do free motion or maybe your machine hasn't got a free motion foot and you can't drop the feed dogs, you can actually do it on a normal sewing machine and it's just a lot of um, lifting the um, foot and everything up and down. That's the only difference, but um, it's just so beautiful. Mm. Um, the other thing is um, you don't have to make it into a cushion. So, you know, if you wanted to, you could make it into a bag. If you wanted to add wadding um, or H640, I've used H640 on the bag over there, you can do. Um, you can quilt it as well. So lots and lots of things. So take you through step by step, I think, um, will be a good place to start. So um, you get your instructions and you get your templates. And then I would recommend using um, the bond web. I'm not sure, did you say it came um, on the roll as well or just in the pack? Just in the pack, I think. Yeah. This is the one I've got here, yes. Okay, so, so it's just two, sorry, I'm just going to interrupt, yeah. sorry. It's 2.99 and you get 17.5 centimetres times 1.20 metres. I mean, bond web is basically double sided glue it is it? but um, it's got a paper backing yes so one side you'll feel the um the actual surface and it's a little bit rough and that's where the glue is and then the other side is the paper side and um you you're right you've got glue both sides so the bonder web is used for adhering one piece of fabric to another piece of fabric so you know it is wonderful really really good so the bonder web um, there's plenty in the pack there to do this design and you'll have you know quite a lot left over as well and um, the only thing that i would say and i'm not sure how clear it is in the instructions but i found when i was doing the umbrella there that i did the background color as a whole piece and then I did this piece and this piece in the um, alternate colour oh. rather than actually doing each individual piece. You can do each individual piece, but I found it easier, and I'll show you um, in a moment, to actually do the whole of the umbrella and then just do the two panels separately. So what you'll do with your bond web is with the glue side down, you'll place that over the template and with a crayon or a pencil or a pen, I found a crayon is really good because it doesn't um, smudge. And um, I did it with a pen once before and I had marks all over my hand sort of while I was you know, doing it. Mm. So a child's crayon is really good. And don't worry about the thickness. You don't have to be really, really fine. You don't have to be really particular. So um, you want to make the most of your bond web. So move the bond web you want enough of a space around the outside and then you'll just trace the design so I'm doing one of the clouds here and she does tell you um, how many of each item to trace and how many to cut out see even uh, I mean we've talked about this before even when people are using this this panel because you're doing it yourself excuse me I'm going to cough yourself um, it's all going to look individual everybody's is going to look slightly different yes isn't it? because your really choice lovely. of fabrics or the choice of the pattern on the panel that you're going to use is going to be different from somebody else's um, which makes it unique also Helen does give you a guide um, the clear photograph on the front gives you a really clear guide as to where to place all the elements but you don't have to follow that exactly no that's the other thing it's you know which you. Is, this is, is your wonderful. design and can i just mention i'm so so pleased on the actual panel um with the brick fabric the brick fabric is just amazing and um, because to try and find brick fabric would be really difficult but if you're really really confident you could actually um get a normal fabric and then maybe do sort of some 
um, quilting and things like that on the bricks. But to have the brick fabric on the you panel is, is just perfect. We've got a message here from Jackie saying, Morning, Wendy and Cara. Ordered the bundle. I love Helen Newton's patterns. Morning, I agree. Jackie. We agree, don't we? Oh, my beautiful. gosh. I think you have done a few, haven't you, Jackie? Which is wonderful. And it's been so nice to see on Helen's um, website and on the Sewing Street Fans um, website as well, the Facebook page, to see um, all the different versions, mm. you know, and it's just incredible it what is. people are doing with them. So all I've done, I've traced it onto the um, bond web and I've just roughly cut out. You don't cut on the line at this stage. And then you take your ironing board and as, as we said, <coughs> we've got lots and lots of fabric left over. I mean, this is from two panels, but you can see you've got sort of plenty to play around with. So this is um, one of the clouds and they are rain clouds. So we're going to go for one of the greys. I couldn't believe, um, I think, quite a few parts of the country yesterday, we had massive hailstones. Yeah, did you? Yeah, massive hailstones. I, I thought it was snow or sleet, um, but then when I looked on the ground, I could see it was just hailstones yesterday. So, we um, did have, I'm trying to remember, isn't it awful? We did have rain. But yeah. half my journey was in rain and half of it was in sunshine. It's I know, strange. I know. It is quite strange. We are in May, aren't we? <laughs> we are, I know. And normally this time of year, we're talking to one of my um, work colleagues at the exhibitions. It was her birthday yesterday. So happy birthday yesterday, Faye. And um, she was saying that normally at this time of year, you can guarantee good weather. Yes. Because it, it is um, cause it was my yes. son's birthday on Sunday. And again, normally we've been able to have outside parties. Yes. Not that we can have parties at the moment, but but this year it was very iffy. Very, very strange. But they do say it's going to get warmer at the weekend, but maybe still a little bit of showers. But um, the gardens need it. <laughs> I really sound old, don't I, when you say, oh, the gardens need it. The garden need needs it. it. <laughs> so um, you take a piece of your fabric. You want to put the bond web with the glue side down onto the fabric and then with an iron without steam you want to um, just hold that over the bond web just to release the glue. Now the um, silicon mat is wonderful and this is really good if you're not sure about the temperature of your iron or anything you can actually use that and the heat goes through the silicon um, but equally if there's any um, glue that sort of comes through or anything like that goes onto the silicon mat rather than on your iron which is really good so. yeah this is the applique mat that you're using isn't it yes so again we've got that on the website i think we're going to try and find um, the graphics for you so it's 6.99 I use these all the time. They're oh, no. so useful, aren't I they? Know. I know. I hadn't sort of found one um, until I came onto Sewing Street. So it's so nice to sort yes, of Yes, it is really, really useful to have. Um, and this, this one is 12.2 um, 12, 12 inches times 11.8 or 31 times 30 centimetres. Um, so it's quite a nice size. But, I, you know, if you're using like strips of interfacing when you're um, maybe attaching ribbons before you... you sew them in place i mean i sometimes do that i'll fuse them in place yes and you just want to make sure that you haven't got a little bit of interfacing a little bit of the bond web sticking yes. out and getting yes. onto your iron oh gosh so this absolutely. is so useful yes. isn't it so then once the um piece has been adhered to the fabric you'll cut it out um again don't worry it doesn't have to be exactly on the line um but quite smooth and you follow the line round I'm not going to cut this one all out. I'll just do it like that. And then that's your bond web actually onto your fabric. And once it's cooled down, it's a lot easier. You can just bend the fabric up and then peel the bond web away and you're left with the glue on the actual fabric. And then that's what you will actually place onto your backing. And um, I'm going to show you how to pop all the pieces on. So part and I would um, pl start the placement actually. Um, where can I put this? St part, start the placement. I don't want that to go on the floor. Um, 
onto your ironing board on, or onto an ironing mat. It's just much, much easier because once you start placing things, you'll want to sort of press things in position. Um, and there's nothing worse than picking something up that's not stuck yes. and it starts and moving slipped. around. So um, I like the way that the front panel is kind of like done before you put all the applique on. Um, the actual front panel is made up of um, the pieces so yeah. she will give you um, information how to make the backing panel so um, you have a piece of the light blue from the panel a piece of the brick and then a piece of what I would call like a sandy or you know floor color and then you'll um, put those together you'll also cut from the panel the um, border here the short border here and then the long border at the side and that's all machined together before you actually start so you're making your backing panel mm. which is wonderful and um, I pressed the seams to the dark side and that I found was a lot easier because you didn't see it through the fabric and then the other thing before you actually start going any further you can actually put um, the medium weight interfacing on the back and that just gives you um, a little bit more um, Texture, not texture. So it's, it's a bit more body and support. Body, that's isn't the it? word I was yes. looking for. And we, again, we've got this on the website. This is the medium weight pack, pre pack, and iron on, which means it's fusible. So yes. again, you can iron that on, and it's yep. a meter square. So that's a good one. Or Helen actually does recommend the stitch and tear. Yes, that's, so we've also got stitch and tear if you prefer. Um, I must be like you I would put the medium weight interfacing stitch and tear it's very it's a similar idea it gives you support when you're stitching but the idea being is you tear it away once you've finished your stitching so again we do have that one <laughs> so then um, the next okay, part sticking his tongue out sorry <laughs> they put they put the number for this the code number for this right over his mouth so <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we were talking about the umbrella and um, hoping that you'll be able to see that. So you have your two umbrella pieces and they've already been cut out to the line. They've still got the paper on the back. That's quite important at this stage. Um, and then you've got the panels of the umbrella. And I've actually taken the paper off the back of that because I found it much, much easier then to place these in position and then you're actually um, sticking the fabric to the base of the umbrella and that's much much easier so keep the paper on the umbrella take the paper off the two panels that you've got place those in position use your silicon mat or just be careful if you don't have your silicon mat available and then just press those into position and this is before you actually pop it onto the panel at the back so you'll see now that those are attached and they won't fall off but you've still got your paper on the back of the umbrella let that cool down do the other one I'm just looking at the instructions here and it doesn't doesn't say either way about cutting out the whole umbrella and then the panels yeah so that's up to you but if you look at the photograph i think it looks like they've done exactly what you've suggested yeah. i think you know you can do it either way how yeah. confident you feel about putting the panels together but i found you know it's just a little hint and there's plenty of fabric so you can actually do that anything to make it simpler i think so then that's both of those and then you'll um, have all your other pieces um, and take the paper off the back. The only thing that I would say is with the very small pieces, you'll see here, I'm hoping you'll be able to see, I haven't actually cut them out yet. And th there's a reason for that, is that um, if you actually cut it out, you'll find that the paper comes away um, that's not too bad if you know exactly where the pieces are going to go and if you're not wanting to do it as we've done it there. So um, these ones I'm going to actually cut out, but let's start popping the, some of the design actually onto the backing panel and show you how you can build it up. We are going to be doing a little bit of um, free motion, hopefully by the end of this show, um, 
but also in the second show. So if you can um, stay around for the second show, that would be wonderful. But I am hoping to get to the stage where we do some free motion, even if it's just on a couple of the pieces. So, I mean, you've just moved the picture in shot. I was going to say, do yeah. you keep the picture in shot so you can... Definitely. You can see where to... I mean, where she suggests you lay everything, yes. but you don't have to do it like yes. that. Yes. And quite a few of them will overlap. So that's the other thing is before you actually press anything, you want to be sure that you've got the pieces where you're happy, they're positioned. So this particular one on the right hand um, cloud, we've then got the, the dotty cloud in the middle and you'll see they overlap the border as well, which I love. I absolutely mm. love that freedom. Um, and then you've got the other one on the other side and that just slips underneath the spotty one. Okay, so those ones you'll see on the actual picture, there's nothing else around them. So I'm actually going to press those ones in, into position and then build the picture up as we go down. Whilst you do that, Cara, yeah? we've got a message. Um, this is from Helen Newton. Oh, she hi says, Helen. hi everyone, I'm loving watching today. <laughs> I really enjoyed creating this design, but I had no idea it would rain so much oh. before the show. <laughs> I know. Oh, thank you, Helen. Hello, I hope you're keeping nice and dry today. I've never actually met Helen. One day, one day, we oh, will meet, yes. definitely. Right, so that's the clouds in position. And in the instructions, Helen does go through about the um, umbrellas and the how to place those. Um, she's actually put the clouds on later, um, but it's you know entirely up to you. Um, but when you're adding the um, girls and everything and the umbrellas, that's the important thing to actually be happy where the position is because you're going to be slipping some of the um, pieces underneath other pieces. So we'll just take our time and pop the umbrella. Can take the paper off the back now, so that's nice and cool. Take the paper off the back of this one. If you do have difficulty, if you use a pin, you can yep. scratch it, can't you? And yes. then pull it off, definitely. particularly on the little tiny pieces. Yes, definitely. So I'm going to just pop that, so if you can see here, you can see that this part of this umbrella overlaps here and there's a little area of the sky behind it. And it's at a nice jaunty angle because these umbrellas are huge. They are huge. <laughs> so definitely keep them dry. And then we have the other umbrella there and again it overlaps. So this is just a suggestion, isn't it? It is. If you don't want to put them like this, you don't have to no, put them like this. No, you definitely don't. And then we've got the lovely blue. Have I got all of this in shot? There we go. Is that better? The lovely blue coat there. So we can pop that underneath. And that overlaps the bricks and everything. Um, we've got a lovely little tag at the back all the um, papers off at the moment so um, I am just going to place these in position there's a little hand here although you haven't got um, a separate piece of fabric for the hand because it's only tiny I've actually used <coughs> the center of one of the checked pieces so I'm just going to cut that out and remember to take the um, paper off the back There's so much detail to this. It's isn't wonderful, there? absolutely wonderful. Oh, we have a warning. <laughs> We've got less than 50 of the bundles left, and we did start with hundreds. Gosh. I do think this is an absolutely cracking bundle. Um, and we know a lot of people collect the Hen he Helen Newton patterns, understandably, because they're beautiful. We do have more later on as well, some really lovely designs. But if you do want the panel, the backing fabric and the instructions at 19.99, uh, grab it whilst you can, because it is beautiful. It's a lovely, lovely design. 
Um, and it's just, it is all the tiny little detail, the fact that you've got little hands, you've got puddles, you've got little boots. I love the boots. Cats. And you've even got, um, you know, the little buckle on the boot. You know, on welly boots, you have sometimes a little piece of the um, rubber at the back. You've even got that there. And it, even the little collar for I the know, dog. I know, I know. Dog collar. So um, I'm just layering. And whilst you were chatting, I put the hand underneath the sleeve. I put the little girl's dress underneath the jacket. I'm now putting these striping and can you see she's not pulled her stockings up properly so they're a bit sort of um, at an angle. <laughs> that was done deliberately. Um, and then we've got the lovely spotty welly boots and then there's a puddle. So we need to make sure that the puddle is in position and it's this one. So I'm going to pop the puddle there. And then the other puddle is just further down. And don't worry, you know, you can overlap. Um, you can put these in your the position that you feel comfortable with. So we've got the top of the welly there. So this is what you were saying earlier about putting it on your ironing mat before you start yes. making this placement. Yeah. You know, it would be so awful if you've done all this and then you p try to pick it up and take it to the ironing mat. Yeah, so she looks like she's leaning a bit, but I think it's a bit windy, so that's why she's leaning a yeah. bit. Um, I'm going to straighten her up a little bit. But you can play around with it so much. So all of that is now in positions that I'm happy with. Um, might just move her legs slightly because she is bracing against that really windy day. That one like that. What's she called? Um, I haven't decided. <laughs> Somebody can tell us what she's called. Betsy. Betsy oh, Blue. Oh, Betsy. She looks lovely. So I'm happy with all the items in position. And you can see I've just popped the sil silicone ma mat over the top. And I'm just going to hold the iron there to position that. To seal the glue, to melt the glue onto the backing fabric. This applique mat really comes into its own, doesn't it? It certainly does. When and you're doing there all these you can see it. that's all. So quick as well. Yes. And what I need to do, I didn't um, iron the umbrella on, so I'm just going to press that on as well. It's lovely that they're all different patterns, these fabrics yes. as well. Yes. And you haven't got, like you say, you haven't got to go out and buy lots of different fabrics. All the panels and everything, yes. all the patterns or, are or there. Or try and go through your stash and find yes. you know, how many different fabrics are on this panel. Let's have a look. Whilst you're busy gluing, I'm going to have a count up. So just to make sure I can still count. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm just popping the, so the um, collar was very small. So again, I hadn't cut that out beforehand. Just going to trim that off and then take the paper off the back if I can. So and you'll be interested lovely. to know 25 Gosh, different, different fabrics, fabric wow. colours and patterns on this panel. Wow. Just going to move so that'd be quite hard to find in your own stash, wouldn't it? It would, but uh, that's what I love. You know, I'm, I know when people are doing um, their projects, don't throw anything away. It's yes. incredible what you need and when you need it. So I've put the dog in position there. He's quite happy. He's sat there. I love the, I love the fact he's got a little red collar. And popped his collar on. So that's that one in position. Yeah. Right, so we come to the other little girl. What's her name then? Rosie. Oh, that's my daughter. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> She used to love going Mindy. in the puddles and everything. Oh, don't children do, don't they? They do. And why not? Wouldn't we still if we could? If we could get <laughs> away with it. I still do. Yeah. Yeah. You can pretend it's because your daughter does. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I went for a walk the other day and it was across, I don't know if I said this story, but it was across a really, really, really muddy field. And you know when you're walking across and you've got your Wellington boots and you get your Wellington boots stuck? Well, across this muddy field I got one of my Wellington boots stuck and I carried on going but my foot and the Wellington boots stayed <laughs> thank goodness there was somebody in front of me and I just 
grabbed hold of them and for a minute I thought we were both going to go in but we didn't so uh, <laughs> that would have been awful absolutely uh, yeah, awful. It, would, it would have been very funny too <laughs> yes I think somebody <laughs> needed to film it yes. I actually did um I didn't do that but I walked with a friend I mean most of the time we were walking on sort of tarmac and paths and things yes decided to take a shortcut across a field I was wearing suede <gasps> boots. No! <laughs> I, I have managed to get the mud out, but it was sort of ankle deep. This oh, mud. no. And by the time I'd taken two or three steps, there was no point in turning back. It was like, I know. they're done. This <laughs> I know. Um, please, Wendy, don't tell me that you had heels on no, those they, boots. No, they weren't you? heels. They weren't <laughs> heels, but they were, because we weren't intending. I mean, no. I've got walking boots. I yes. I've got proper walking yep. boots. I know. Car was saying that because I'm known for my heels. <laughs> I've never seen Wendy without heels. Got some on today, but they're only little kitten heels. <laughs> Don't know why I bother, because you can't see them. But <laughs> <laughs> that's actually why I'm sitting down. Right. Definitely gets me in the zone, yes. So we're just building up layer upon layer. You've got your puddle there again. And this one, Rosie, is kicking the water in the puddle. So she's got one of her boots at an angle. Um, there's another puddle over there. And can you see on the pattern, if I bring it down, sorry, I didn't realise that wasn't in um, shot. On the, her coat, she's got a band at the back of the coat and a little pocket. So I've got these ones just to cut out and put in position. It's um, just the detail is amazing. Yeah, it's just lovely that you can choose your own way of doing it and everybody will do it slightly differently. And this was a perfect launch on a day when the weather's <laughs> been so bad. We would have all wondered why we were doing something with puddles and rain and things like that had the, had the weather been glorious. So the next hour we've got a beautiful um, design of a harbour and um, it looks more summery. Yes. It looks really more summery. This is, this is love. I love this one. It's gorgeous, isn't it? it? Is. You can Again, absolutely it's, imagine. It's just it's such simple shapes have created this amazing picture. And as I say, I love the way that you've got the border on before you, because the, so the applique is actually overlapping the yes. border. I think that looks really yes. lovely. It looks really effective, doesn't it? But as you say, it doesn't have to be a cushion. You could make no, this into not at a all. bag. It could be a bag. You? Um, you could um, have it for a bag, you know, to put your towel in, to put your book in, you know, when you're going on the beach or something like that. Mm. You know, it'd be really, really nice. So, um, so we've got the actual picture, sorry, of the um, panel there. And I've placed all the pieces in position and I'm really happy with that really happy that it does look a little bit blowy and wet so I'm just going to put the silicon mat over the top again and finish putting the heat through to melt the glue on there where there's more than one layer so on the umbrellas you've got two layers of fabric so one of the um, panels on the umbrella has got two layers of fabric to go through to release the glue so that's again why it's nice having the silicon mat so hoping we're just going to go over to that side so just to remind you we have got that applique mat um, which is actually uh, on on you can pre-order it or you can get it. I think we're putting the graphic at 6.99 there's the graphic for it it's a 30 by 31 centimetre square. It's really useful to have, particularly when you're working with bond or web or other fusible webs, no matter what it is. Very useful. Right. So, hopefully, famous <laughs> last words, pick this up and nothing moves. So, you know, that's the beauty of it. Just realise that one of those is just moved slightly so her buckle's a bit loose i'm going to leave it as it is just see if there's anything that doesn't look as though it's um stuck down properly so we're now ready to do some free motion and 
as I say, I've not done a massive, you've done quite a lot, haven't you, free motion? But I would still call myself a beginner. I have done a lot, but I'm not, you know, like, you know these experts, like Wendy Dolan's one of my favourite, and um, yes. And they, when they I see Helen experts. do these yes. designs, I'm like, oh my gosh. But, you know, I suppose I've only really been doing free motion for about a year. So um, I am still learning. And you never, ever, ever stop learning. And I just find it addictive, though. <gasps> Once you Honestly, get started, I know. you just go. And I watch what I like because I've done a cushion with little stick figures and you know a plique fabric and everything. It was a, a class on a plique, but I had faces. I like the way she's got umbrellas. I know. So you haven't got to do faces because they can be a bit or tricky. the back of <laughs> or the back of somebody, which is yes. really nice. Um, okay, so before you actually do um, any of the um, applique, what I would recommend, and I find this absolutely. Um, invaluable really is you can take a friction pen and if it's the fabrics um, are quite dark then you can go for a black friction pen which um, will stand out nicely and I actually go round and I actually do draw onto my fabric because it's a friction pen once that's ironed then that will disappear so um, I will actually move the ironing board and that will stop me from being tempted to iron anything again um, and then I use the friction pen and you can either look on here for the details so um, please bear in mind that obviously everything's in reverse because once you've actually traced this onto the bonder web your coat's the other way around but you'll notice on the coat she's got um, a seam coming up so I just find it so much easier and then there's a little tag on the inside there and even where you've got a light colored fabric and against a light background then I do actually do just a line and it's just a guide it really is just a guide but it does help enormously so I'm going across her dress here down the side of her legs then round her wellies And this is lovely. This is so therapeutic when you're just, uh, so we want the... So basically you're just drawing your stitching line. Yes. But don't feel that you've got to um, stay with the stitching line. It is just a guide. And if you come off slightly, don't worry about it. Because once you've finished all your stitching, um, you'll be ironing it and everything will disappear. So I've got my puddle here. And this again is light coloured fabri fabric against a light background. So actually having a line like that really does help. When you've got it on the machine, you can't always see the difference between the two. And then we've got lovely ripples in the puddles as well. There, around here. So I would spend a bit of time drawing and just matching um, the actual lines and everything. So we've got the umbrella here. Oh, that, I'm not going to iron it, but you can see I haven't actually caught that down properly, but once I start doing the free motion, that will be in place. And on this particular one, we just do a line on the panels, not on both sides. If you had done them all as individual panels, then you would actually have a line of stitching on both sides of the fabric. So you'd have another line there if they were individual. So we'll just do that. And we've got the top of the umbrella and then the line around the outside. So I'm going to do a little bit of machine. How much time have we got? Oh, lovely. I've got to read this message from Tina. So Tina Rowley said, morning, Wendy and Cara. I had to smile. I'm 68 and my grandchildren have grown up, but I still jump in puddles. Oh, wonderful. Good for you. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Just don't do what Dawn did in Vicar of Dibley. Do you remember when she jumped in the panel, pu puddle and she just went up to her neck? <laughs> it's like, do it when you feel that nobody's watching and it <laughs> yes. doesn't matter. I think... Uh, we can just 
all get joy from something like that. Just a little thing like that will make um, you have a smile on your face. Yeah, definitely. As long as you're dressed for it. Yes. And as long as you don't mind if you do splash, that um, it doesn't matter that you get mud all over some of your clothes. I think that's the other thing you've got to think of, haven't you? You've got to just think, you know, does it matter? Yeah. I like that. I like that idea. We've got about 10 minutes left. Yes, that's fine. So um, I'm just doing, so what I'm going to do is machine round one of the clouds and then machine round one of the um, umbrellas. And if there's time, then I'll do some of the smaller ones. But as I say, the next hour, I'll have time to do a little bit more. So you carry on and you'll draw all the details. Um, I usually look at the cover because um, that's really clear. And then you'll want to do some raindrops as well. That's the other thing. So um, this is really good for just until you get confident. I think that's the other thing. You know, once you get confident with your um, free motion. This no, you don't have to do this step, do you? You could, you you don't. could just go for it. Yeah. Um, and you're using a friction pen that you mentioned, yes. which we do sell as well. We um, sell them individually. Um, it's still at an early bird price, actually. We've just got it on, on the screen there on the uh, right-hand side. Oops. So I've come bereft. with I've got no rings on today. <laughs> because... <laughs> When I was packing up yesterday, I was talking to my son who's had his car was um, hit. Oh dear. Doesn't know when or by oh whom. You know, it was obviously when it was parked. So because I was talking to him and commiserating with him, I forgot to pack rings. Oh I mean, gosh. really. <laughs> um, okay, so the next stage is get your machine ready. And if you've never done um, free motion, I always recommend to do some practice. So get some of the spare fabric, um, get a plain piece of fabric, and um, cut out some pieces and then just have a go and that will get your confidence. Um, I always do it, whichever design I'm doing. If there's something I think, oh right, am I going to be able to do all the detail for the dog? Um, with the curves of the cloud, am I going to be able to go around that? The puddle, am I going to get the ripples of, of the puddle? So I always do a little practice piece. Um, the other thing is, is look in your manual and see if you've got a free motion foot. It's a darning foot usually, um, and that's where um, you'll be able to actually see where you're going to be stitching. You'll drop your feed dogs. So um, the feed dogs are these lovely little teeth here, and normally they will actually pull or bring your fabric through. When you drop them, it means that you're in control of what you're doing, um, so that's really good. The other thing is I would um, possibly do a new needle um, so if you you've done a lot of sewing then um, you might want to change your needle um, I always forget to change my needle and actually it's so much better I know I know <gasps> terrible terrible especially with the amount of sewing that I'm doing at the moment so um, every eight hours every well every new project every new project yeah every yes. new project so Did I say eight hours thinking dressmaking but every yes, new project you should have a new needle. every new project and clean out the bobbin Yes, yes, I do do that. Um, Kat's just said, can you use a regular foot? And I would say no. Not when you're not, it's not so easy because a regular foot will actually um, be flat on the um, fabric. The, with the darning foot, the, it lifts, well, some of them lift up and down or some of them hover just mm. above. If you want to use um, without dropping the feed dogs and use a normal sewing stitch, so it could be a blanket stitch, could be a straight stitch, then yes, definitely you can use a normal um, foot. But if you want to try free motion and have a go, I mean, watching Delphine do her free motion as well is just so inspiring. So you can do it without a foot. Ooh, I don't know whether I'm really Yeah, <laughs> but obviously, there's nothing to protect you from the needle if you put yeah. your hands too close to the needle. Yes. You just lower the presser foot lever, yeah. but have no presser foot at all. <gasps> Gosh, no. You can, but I'm not recommending that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I have discovered are these magic gloves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which are so good for helping you um, when you're controlling your fabric. Um, it, I don't know how. It's like a little bit like Velcro. You've actually, it, it, your hands are stuck onto the fabric. So when you're moving the fabric, these gloves just help 
so much. Yeah, absolutely do. So we, again, we've got these gloves. Three ninety nine for these quilting gloves. They have. They've got like little grippy teeth. They have. How do you get on your non slip um, slippers and things? You've got little grippy teeth <laughs> on each of the digits. So I've dropped my feed dogs. I've put my lever down to put the foot as close to the fabric as possible. I've got my new needle, and um, what I do is start and I put the needle down towards the fabric and then I drop the needle. It just means that when you stop machining, your needle's in the down position, so it's a lot easier that way. So I'm just going to start, and you can see I'm following the marks that I've drawn as close as possible, but don't worry if you don't follow them exactly. And the whole thing about free motion is it's free, so it's very loose um, and you'll find your own way of doing it. The other thing is you can actually put the speed of the machine, and this is sort of like an average speed that I've got, but it means that because I've set the speed of the machine, my foot's flat on the ground and you can just keep a steady pace. That's the trick, isn't it? It's, yes. It's uh, foot flat on the pedal, but reduce the speed so it's not going super fast. Yes. And then keep a regular pace, regular movement. And the other thing is, um, Helen recommends a dark thread. I've got a lovely dark brown here that I used. Um, rather, I didn't have enough black at home. And I tend to use a color that complements the design. Um, just going to stop there. So when I've stopped, everything is loose and everything. So, but the needle is down and the foot is as close to the fabric as possible. I just wanted to see where I was with this particular one. And I'm going round the lines twice. And it gives this um, beautiful sketching type effect. And when you come back to the beginning where you started, just let your needle go up and down a few times in one position, and that's like a locking stitch. And then if you've got um, automatic cutter, you can automatically cut. I'll bring that over. Hopefully you'll be able to see. So I've got just gone round the cloud there. And as you s can see, some of the lines are exact. Some of them are separate, but it just still looks really, really nice. Um, so I'm going to do one of the umbrellas. It is, it is this, it's a technique, isn't it? It's called naive or naive. It's, um, it's a sort of rough free motion. Yes. And it is better if you go round more than once. Yes. Because then it can see that it's done on purpose like that. Yes. I must say the other thing I do, um, it depends on the sewing machine you have, but set your stitch length to zero or as close to zero as you can. Because on some machines, if you don't, you get loops underneath. The other thing that I love about this 680 is that it knows that you've put a darning foot on there, so it automatically goes to zero. Does it? That's yes. clever. Which clever is very machine. clever. I don't know if we've got any of those available at the moment. So I'm actually going to go around. Do you remember where um, I hadn't um, pressed it with the iron for very long? So I've just gone over that loose fabric to hold it in position. So I'm just going round the outside of the umbrella to hold it all in position. And it's the other thing is is breathe when you're doing <laughs> it, blink when you're doing it, and if you can, have a chat with somebody while you're doing it. When you first start, you forget to breathe, <laughs> you forget to blink, and you're like, yeah, and you want to be nice get tense and relaxed. shoulders. You've got to relax your shoulders. Yes, yes. So I'm just coming up around the top of the umbrella and then I'm going to go back down again. I'm going to put the speed up a little bit because I know we're running out of time. So. so the faster the speed of the needle, the smaller the stitches, unless you move your fabric a lot quicker. So you are determining the stitch length by the speed that you're moving your fabric through. And you'll notice I'm not turning it all the time. I'm actually just moving the fabric from side to side, up and down and diagonally. I'm going to turn that down just slightly. 
That was a bit scary, that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just coming round the outside there. And then we're going to do the panels. What you can do is do the panels, because you're going to be going backwards and forwards, you can go up. Oops, I've got a bit of a wobble on there. Um, you can go up and down the panels as you're going round. So I'm just going to go up around the loop again, at the top, and then breathe. And then I'm just going to turn that slightly because I'm going to come down the panels either side. So, so because you're doing two rows of stitching, you can actually come back on yourself and you'll, you'll find yourself back up at the top again. And then... And up again. Oops. As I say, don't worry if you come off the line. Let's move that round. The other thing is, I find that um, actually a thread on the spool that's a similar colour is gives a really nice finish. Um, if I had a white thread, sometimes, depending on how you're machining, you can sometimes see the white thread coming up. So if you actually have a thread on the bottom that's similar to the thread on the top, you won't have that problem. So I got back to the beginning, done a couple of stitches there, and then, and there's your umbrella. See how quick it is. Mm -hmm. Is there time to do any more? How are we for time? About three minutes. Uh, okay, choose a part. A boot. <laughs> a boot. I can do a boot. Oh no, a, a, a raindrop. A raindrop, yep. I think you should do some raindrops because they're... Yep. What you've done is go around the boot in exactly the same way as you've done, yes. don't you? So let's yes. do a raindrop. So for the raindrop, I've drawn some little drops, um, but you don't have to. You can just do your own raindrop. Um, and then I'm going to start at the top of the raindrop. just want to pull the thread out and move my needle down until I'm happy that the needle's going to go into the top there. Then press the machine so that the needle goes into the fabric. And then do a couple of stitches there, lift the needle up, lift your lever up and move over. And what you've got is a long thread, but don't worry about that because when you've finished, you'll come along and cut on the top and the bottom to get rid of that long thread. Pop the lever down. So are you stitching on the spot to finish each yes. one then? So anchor yeah. those stitches. Yeah. And that means you have your threads, hopefully, won't undo. That's a nice big fat raindrop there. So lift the needle up, lift your lever up, come over to another one, come over to this one here. And as, as you're um, putting the needle down, can you see the actual lever of the um, darning foot is going down towards the fabric? And that's what's holding um, your fabric in position but it's not controlling it you're still controlling it so I'm going to pop my needle down into the fabric and then do another one round this is a nice speed for me I like um, the other one was a bit too fast <laughs> <laughs> needle up leave it up come down to another one over here so this is how you'll do your raindrops needle into the fabric, make sure your lever's down. And I've gone round the raindrops twice. A couple of stitches there. Cut off. I'm going to take my gloves off. And I think I've got my other. So once you've um, done a few of your rain raindrops, you will cut your thread there and there, there, and there. And because you've done the stitches in one position, they shouldn't 
undo and then just on the back just do exactly the same. And little embroidery scissors are very useful. Yes. Um, also, I think there's applique scissors as well where you can get really, really close yeah. to the fabric. So, so that's the start. So I hope that uh, demystified the actual uh, free motion sort of thing and um, just really, really enjoy it. Don't feel nervous. Do your practice piece and um, you know that will help you. It will give you the confidence to then carry on. The other thing is don't look too closely at where you stitched. You know, don't think, oh, I've come away from it, you know, my lines aren't exact, except you know, don't do that, you know, because you don't want to undo anything. You really don't want to do anything. And even on the cushion that I've done there when I was doing it, I was looking at it, I was thinking, oh, that's not so good, oh, that's not so good. But then when you look at the overall effect, I think that's the beauty of it. And yours will be different from everybody else's. So just have fun and enjoy it. Thank you, Cara. Absolutely. I have to say, um, Sue Patterson says, fab demo from Cara again this morning. She makes it look so easy. Oh, thank you. I hope so, because it is, it really is. But and you're going to be back with us again at 11 yes. o'clock with some more. Yes. but uh, Different um, cushion. Little, little bit of a twist. Yes. Yeah. So that's going to be really good. But before we go, I just wanted to recap on the bundle. We only have five bundles left, so if you're interested in the bundle, nab it now. So the bundle includes a half meter of the red cotton, which is used for your backing. And so half meter is a lot, so if you wanted to make a bag rather than a cushion, you can. Uh, it also includes the instructions, very clear instructions, with of course the pattern on the front, so you can see exactly how to place it if you wish. Clear instructions and your templates and they're full size templates for you to cut out. And it has the panel, which is a huge panel with 25 different fabric pieces on it. So this is sort of half of it. Um, so this is what, I'm gonna go put that there just to show. So you've got all of these different fabrics, look, all on here. All of the little checks, the spots, all of these, all the little pieces that you need to create these, even the tiny boots, the little stockings, the collar, it's all here, it's everything you need for this. This is one side of this panel. If I flip it, when I say I flip it over, I could open it up, but it's huge. So I'm just going to flip it over to show the other side. So this is the bigger pieces. So this is your border. Uh, you've got the brick that Cara was talking about. It's a really lovely brick. And you only sort of use half of that. I mean, you could virtually get two out of this. This is your bottom, this is your stone colour, and then you've got your sky at the top there. There's one left now, so one. So if you want it, grab it, don't, don't miss it. We do have the instructions on their own, um, which I've just managed to cover up. So these are 9 99 for the instructions on their own. Um, so what you have here is you've got, obviously you've got the, the picture, so you can follow that really clearly. And then inside you've got what you will need. So if you haven't got the panel, you're just going for the instruction. This is what you're going to need. How to cut it all out, create the panel, add the border, prepare the applique. It's all very, very clear how to do it. And then do your free motion and then the cushion back. If this is the first Helen Newton design you've seen, we do have a bundle for you that might be for you in the next hour, in Cara's next hour. Um, it's on pre-order on the website and it's got f six, six Helen Newton patterns, including the two new ones today. And it's a five pound saving. So I'll mention that now just in case, because we don't want it to, um, you know, you to think, oh, it sounds really, really great. Wait until 11 o'clock and it's gone. So I'm mentioning it now. If you're interested, have a look on the site. We've got a bundle of six of her patterns and it saves you five pounds if you buy all six. That is just the, that's just the pattern without the fabric. So coming up next is out of Africa fabric, which sounds really exciting. So we will see you after the break. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. 
Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi, welcome back, or if it's the first time you've joined us this morning, good morning. Uh, I'm Wendy Gardner and I'm here with Out of Africa Fabric. This sounds so lovely. I have got here bundles of fabric, I've got some books, I've got some threads, even silk thread, which is beautiful, and a few project ideas. Dawn was supposed to be with us. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to make it today, but she has very kindly sent us some of the projects that she has made, and they have been made from one of our books here, the Sew Baby book. Um, just to give you some ideas of what you can do with these lovely fabrics. So let's start with this first bundle. This is a Michael Miller bundle and it includes, so it's, um, have you moved these cameras back? Well, my eyes really got that much worse. $66.99 for the bundle and in that bundle you get a panel as well as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half meters so that's three and a half meters there plus the panel so let me start with the panel because this is really cute and actually uh, I'm going to show it to you but you can see it's behind me as well um, it is available on its own in a while we're doing or if you want to jump ahead it's on the website so this is the bundle look at this this isn't this cute so this is great now what uh, Dawn has done is she's made a quilt front for us here and she's used some of the complementary fabrics to put borders around it, keeping the theme of monotone. But you could, if you wanted to, add colour. You could have coloured borders on the outside. So it has a couple of borders already in, in the prints. So these are already part of it. So she's just added this one. And you could hand it, you could do add hand, this is when we go into ha add hand embroidery, or if you're going to try the free motion that Cara was doing just now, you could free motion around the animals to make them sort of more stand out, particularly if you've got a nice wadding behind. 
so that's really it's a really lovely panel i'm not sure of the size does it say on here the size it's big oh zero oh, it's 90 centimeters so it's a 90 centimeter panel but we can measure it when we when we come to do it on its own i will measure it properly oh i've managed to mess up the facebook because obviously i was leaning on it what have i done see if i can that's it that's better <laughs> So that's that's one. Oh, and I've managed to take the label off it. I'm not doing well today. Oh my goodness, I've stuck it to the table. There's that's the panel. But we also have this one. Now this is cute. This looks like this is that's half of it. Look, if I pull it, let me move, I'm gonna move that out of the way a little bit so I don't do it again. Look at that. So it's got this love on the um, outer edges. Look, it's got this lovely dotty end to it. But this in itself is is a cushion. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> Dawn's made us a cushion. Isn't that cute? So she's actually only used uh, sort of nine of these panels to make a cushion. So you've got some um, bits left. And then in fact, again, she's made an envelope back cushion. So she's got some more here with a coordinating back there so this is just an idea that you can do but this is really cute I mean you can cut them up and do smaller things with them if you like you can make bags you can make cushions um, there's all sorts you can do this is a half meter so um, we are going to sell these individually as well so if you're thinking oh actually I like that but I'd like to make curtains out of it and I need more than half a meter if you uh, go on the website and have a look you can find it or if you wait a few mows I'll come with it then this one this is a really lovely this is, this is a stripe with a difference let's move those out of the way look at this isn't this cute we've got elephants they're all walking that way, then they're walking that way, then they're walking that way. Now, this is, this is cut on the cross. So this is the selvage down here. So these are on the cross. If I turn it lengthwise, they would be on their heads. So this time, it's directional, and they're cut on the cross there. So they just coordinate. I mean, it's, it's, that is so lovely. That would make lovely border, lovely print in the middle of something, and have some other things around the outside. It goes beautifully, of course with this one with the patches that we've just looked at or indeed if you wanted to add color to your panel you can use this around the border you could add you see i think it would be quite nice to sort of do a piece like that you can do pieces together you don't have to have individual strips and then it looks as if you've put lots of lots of different borders around it nice and easy to do so that's really lovely also in the bundle I like to fold these up nicely because they're such lovely fabrics. So this one is a nice sort of all over spot. So this is a lovely coordinating fabric. This is one that you can add. This is good for sashing or detail. Or if, you, you know, if you're making a um, little girl's dress out of something, you could make a little girl's dress out of one of the prints and then put pockets or facings or collars, etc., or a ruffle using something like this. This is really pretty. So it's a grey background with lots of little spots all over it, all over. So it's a multi-directional, really pretty little print. And then we have, let's fold that back up again, this one. So this is the one I mentioned just now. So look at these little animals all over it. <laughs> and they're so beautiful. They really are. They're really funny, funny little animals. Zebra, lion, giraffe tiger elephant of course this is this would love this would be a lovely play mat definitely cat yes you could have storage boxes made out of it this would be a good back you could have throw pillows you could have bags um, all sorts you can make out of this what about yes a, a, a car caddy where you have it, it's wrapped around the headrest of the front or well, strapped around there and then you've got sort of like a caddy, a basket almost, of stuff that you can put the toys and things into. This is really sweet. You could even make an elephant out of the fabric that has elephants on it. That would be sweet. 
So yes, and of course, um, we've got the books. If you're sort of short of ideas or patterns, we've got the books as well with those in them. But so they're on the website and I'll have a look at one of them in a minute. So this is that same fabric again, but on the white. And this really punches out, I think. You see those colours really coming out, all the different little animals, little monkeys. And I like the fact that they're not proper colours. I mean, they're, they're just fun. Why shouldn't a giraffe be jade green? I think they're really lovely, really cute fabric. And it's, it's a lovely fill. No, zebra. <laughs> giraffe is lime green. <laughs> He's lime green. He's <laughs> We're having an argument about which colour he is. <laughs> He's lime green, definitely. So that's the one there. That's a nice one. And now we're going into the monotone ones. So there's something for everybody here. There's something for all uses. <laughs> this is not bright red. <laughs> so this one, and again, it's multi-directional. So I've got an elephant this way up and an elephant that way up. And um, I'm, I'm assuming because these are wild animals, these are cheetahs, not cats. Um, this time... <laughs> <laughs> this is my little giraffe and my zebra. So they're really sweet. So this is just the monitor one if you wanted to keep a nice simple colour. And certainly, you know, with my boys, um, I, don't know, I don't know how they're my children because they both like blacks, beige, grey, cream, at a, at a push. They do not like colour. Where did they come from? I don't think they will because they're in their 20s now. I don't think they will. Actually, my oldest one, he went through a colour phrase. You know, goths wear black. He went through the opposite and he was totally every, every colour under the sun for a while. Yellow, no, he wasn't a goth, but I mean, he was just, it was that kind of, you know, he was like yellow trousers and a multicoloured jacket and, but it didn't last. This is the stripe. So again, I put it round this way. So this is the crossways. So this is the same stripe as we had before in the colour, but this time it's in a monotone. So it's a nice, nice, very simple. Keep it clean. This is really lovely. So this is the bundle. This is sixty-six ninety-nine. Don't forget, you get the panel as well as these seven different half meter pieces. So you've got plenty there to do um, a whole lot. So now um, I can't do the panel by the half meter because I can do the panel as a panel, but this is a panel. So this is $14.99 for this big panel. Let me grab a tape measure just so that you do know exactly what it is. I'll do it in inches. So in inches, it's 35 and a half inches wide. Or if you prefer metric, it is 90 centimetres. So it's 90 centimetres wide by, what's my favourite animal? I think the lion, because I think he looks, oh, are you going to the zoo? So uh, lengthwise, it's 110 or 43 and a half inches. So it is a big panel. It is a big panel. So you could, I mean, if you wanted this just to sort of put on as a, a lap quilt or something like that, this is a lovely thing. If they go for sleepovers and things, you can make a lap quilt. All you need to do is put a backing on. And looking at the backings that we've got, I mean, if you want to keep it the monochrome colour, you can. But otherwise, of course, you could perhaps put either the stripes or the spot would look really nice as a backing for these. So that's the panel. So that is $14.99 for this panel, which is 90 centimetres by 110. Um, don't forget, though, if you buy multiples, they will be individual panels. So if you wanted, if you've got a small window and that would fit your window and you wanted curtains, you'd have two panels like that. That's the panel, but the rest of the fabrics come in uh, multiples of half metres. So you choose which one you want. So this one has been really, I love this, this has been really popular on pre-order because it's sort of done, isn't it? It's done, isn't it, for you? So if you buy a metre, obviously you'll get another row of these. So you've just got lots and lots of these little animals. 
We've only got six and a half metres left. So if you're thinking about this and you're thinking that I would like this as a quilt top, for instance, I mean, all the hard work's done. You could do a bit of quilting around them to make it look like you've done a lot of hard work. But you know, all the panels are all joined or curtains or a bean bag. You know, something, something really big you could do because it looks amazing with all these lovely animals all over it. Um, so yes, if you're looking at something bigger, you're going to buy multiples of. So it's 7.49 per half metre. So if you wanted three metres, you need se uh, six of those. Look at me and my instant maths. And it does, I love the fact on the borders, it has this stripe on the outer edges of that. That's really nice. And the half metre, the stripe is running down the sides. It's down, down the selvage of that. This has been the most popular for pre-order, this one. But I think my next favourite one has got to be this one. Because I love the stripes. And again, I, I like the fact, I'm going to do it this way up because it's, I like the fact that you can use those in multiples. So you could actually just, for instance, we could just have, if I just have the green like that, oh, I can't, I can't fold it all away to get just that bit. There it is. And you could have a border like that using all of those and it'll look like you've put on all of these borders. I think that really is lovely. Very, very nice. So this is a half metre piece. And if you wanted a metre, I've just put two in the basket. And that's this one with all these lovely colours on it. That's really nice. Love That would be lovely for a backing, uh, even if a feature, I think, for stripes, for sashing, whatever. Let's do the same one in the monochrome. Where is that one gone? Oh, right. The one I had in my hand first. So this is the same thing, but this is in monochrome. So if you prefer the monochrome look, um, this, this definitely goes with that lovely panel if you want to have that look. And then if you wanted backing, again, keeping monochrome, you've got this one. But this is a lovely monochrome version of the, exactly the same thing with all of these lovely stripes, which are crosswise because that is the way the fabric would be normally lengthwise. So you'd get more this way when you're ordering more. So that's a really lovely one too. So that is 7.49. And then the next one, let's do the spot. This is a good, this is, this is a very useful fabric to have. It's a really lovely spot. So again, you can use it to accent, to punch out the colors of the others, to make them look really good. Any of these ones, if I bring that in, it brings out all of the colours. It really does. It's lovely. And the same with the favourite panel, this one. All those colours are sort of in here as well. So that does look really, really nice. We are getting limited on this one because it is very versatile. So do bear that in mind if you're interested because you might well think, actually, I quite like three metres of that. Um, so bear that in mind if you're interested. It might be time to pop it in the basket. And then we have, I'm going to go back to this monochrome one again. It does look like they've been drawn on a chalkboard cat. I agree with you. Beautifully drawn as well, actually. So this one is multi-directional and you've got all the little animals here. But the background isn't solid. It's sort of mottled, which is quite nice. So it's softer. But this is definitely one, I can, am I allowed to say this is one for the boys? Or is that sexist nowadays? But I think it, it is just one that is, it is really lovely. It's quite sort of generic, isn't it? This is really lovely. And look at the, you can see, you see the mottled background there. Where is that? Oh, there is the camera there. That's so you can see this mottled background and all the little animals. No, <laughs> there's my giraffe. Oh, and a little bit of fluff. I'm not sure what that one is. A bull. It's a bull. Oh, it is. If you go up that way, it's a monkey. Oh, I was looking. <laughs> I was looking. At, I thought that was. I was horns, and then a nose ring. It's a monkey. If you go up that way. <laughs> I promise. I've only had coffee and water today. <laughs> Seeing animals that aren't there. So. 
The next two are the same design, but one's on a grey, one's on a white. So let's look at the white first. So this is, this is so fresh, I think. The colour makes it so fresh. The white and the, and the colours of all these little animals really pop out and look beautiful. It is, it's, like, it's, it's like a kid's drawing. It really is. It's just sort of beautiful. I love the, the way that they're so sort of spunky little animals. They're not, they're not perfect representations. They're drawings. They're really beautiful. And then on the same pattern, but on the grey background. So again, if you prefer to keep it, the grey is more popular than the white. Oh, oh yes, yes, because Dawn's made something in this grey. Let's have a look here. So this, again, this is in the um, So Baby book. So what we have here is a hang. You, you put a hanger and you hang this on your, your door and it's for, you can put your nappies in it, obviously lotions, wipes, etc. in these pockets. So that's what she's made. So she's used the spot and this, this grey print. So it's quite, it's nice, it's quite neutral, isn't it? So it doesn't matter what sex your baby is, this is what you can make. If you're not sure and you're making a gift for a surprise, this will go with anything, it will blend in beautifully. And it's just fun, isn't it, with these lovely pockets, with little pleats, so they're commodious pockets. They can take some, some things in there. So that's what Dawn has made from this. And from the white one, it's another project from the So Baby book, she's made this, and this is just a wipes holder. So you can pop wipes and things in when you're going travelling and things and you need to take your bag. It's just a nice bag to put wipes and things in. A nice little bookcase. We do still have the bundle, if you want to get the bundle. And you get half a metre of each of these fabrics we've just been looking at. Let me bring them to the fore. So we get half a metre of all of these. And, of course, the panel. And the panel is that lovely quilt top that Dawn has made behind me. So that's, you get all of those and the panel. And that's 66 99 So it's a really lovely bundle there. We are getting limited. But let me show you the So Baby book that these projects that Dawn has done are from. So this book is by somebody you may have heard of before. Uh, this is Debbie Shaw. So lovely book, beautiful photography. So cute with these gorgeous babies. I don't know where the babies come from. I'm not sure if they're her grandchildren or anything. I do know where babies come from there yet. I just don't know where these babies come from. <laughs> I certainly should have had it with my children's father before I had children. Uh, so, yes, apart from the beautiful babies, let's actually look at what the content is. It's 10 top tips for beginners. So this, I mean, again, um, Debbie Shaw's books, uh, she makes sure that they are easy to follow. They are easy projects that anybody can make. And it's all about choosing really good fabrics, which we've shown earlier. You've got useful stitches, so different types of stitches that you might want. Um, and then key techniques as well, sort of how to make things look much better by putting the right techniques together properly. Bias binding, mitering corners, magnetic clasps. And then there's lots of lovely projects. So these are so cute, all these little projects in here. So starting off, look at this hooded towel. I remember my boys having hooded towels when we went swimming. They used to have a hooded towel after they'd been swimming and they could sit there nice and snug, wrap them up warm. Play mat. Oh, definitely for the beach, yes, yes. And that's my, I'm fortunate that I live near, the, well, I say live near the beach. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 15 minutes away from it. I'm not on the beach. I'm not that rich. Yes, so three hours and 50 minutes closer than you. <laughs> yes, it's lovely. So Moses baskets cover. So lots of lovely projects in here to sew for babies or toddlers. Beautifully illustrated throughout. Look, I love this balloon. I love this balloon mobile. Not only for the balloon, but look at this. You've got a little teddy hanging from it. Isn't that gorgeous? That, this is lovely. Little, and he's got buttons to, for his limbs so they can move. Chair harness. Oh, now this is sweet. 
This is a chair harness. Now she's got she's got marmite. That's definitely marmite. <laughs> so this chair harness is a great idea. Keep those little wriggling devils still, but nicely. <laughs> it looks nice. Keep them there. And then bandana bib. I did these for a workshop actually a few years ago um, at a, one of the shows. They are they're they're popular now because they're just a bit nicer than a regular bib, aren't they? A bit more fashionable. Baby nest, this is really handy. This is something that you take with you when you go to visit people and you've got somewhere to put the baby in a nice little nest, keep them safe and cosy. Cot bumpers, definitely need those so they don't get themselves stuck in the bars of a cot. I remember, I remember all of these things, cot pocket. Going back a bit, my boys are in their 20s so they don't need them anymore, believe it or not. Patchwork pillow, but this patchwork pillow, look, this is something you could easily make out of this. I mean, the, um, Dawn's done a very simple pillow, but use this fabric. You haven't got to do the patchworking. It's already done for you. Take a step ahead. Laundry bin. So they're lovely, easy to, easy to make projects. Here's the uh, nursery storage we were just looking at. Lovely, easy to make projects that you can follow step by step, very, very clear instructions. The stroller bag. You always have to have one of these, don't you? You have to have this commodious bag that you need to be able to put everything into when you go out. So lots of that, lots of you can see, you've got lots of, sort of pockets and places inside there to, to put your lotions and potions and bottles and spoons and things. Little sleeping bag, isn't that cute? For in the push chair. So really has got a lot in here. It's always popular, this book. And we've never had this many in stock before. So we've got plenty in stock for you. £9.99. Uh, this has got so many different projects for babies and toddlers. I think it says on the front, there are 20, 20 projects. So effectively 50p a project, which is incredible, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. When they're, they're such detail, such uh, beautiful instructions, all photographed, what you need, the finished size. This is a really cute thing to make. And this, these, there's all sorts of things. So some of these things are great for the home. Some of them are great for traveling. Um, so you've got sort of cot blankets and things or burp cloth, unfortunately. It's quite a useful thing to have. And then that's, that was the little um, bag that it came with it. So you make, you make the little bag to keep your burp cloths in. And then the templates. So all of the templates are actual size, which makes it much easier. You haven't got to try increasing and you can just trace them off and use them. So a beautiful book. If you're going to be sewing anything for babies or little toddlers this is the book for you because it's got lots and lots of lovely projects in there for just 9.99 what more can you want oh extra wide backings yes these these came in they were new the other day um, some of them have been in before but we haven't had the stock but we've got some new colors as well which the new colors did you say the Pink, jade, and dark grey. So the new these are the new colours. They've only been on air once before, these, these three. I'll start with the dark grey, because this actually, of course, goes with our animal panel. So it's extra wide. It's 180, 108 inches. 108 inches, or 280 centimetres. That's, that's kind of like a metre and then another metre, and then another metre, and then a bit. So that's how, that's how long it is. Really, really wide, so lovely and wide. And you're buying it in half metre pieces for eight, $8.99, for eight ninety nine for a half metre piece. So obviously you might well want to have a metre or two metres of this. So just put multiples in your basket to do so. 
And just because it's called backing fabric, don't limit yourself to that. There's no reason why you can't use it for something else. It is a beautiful quality. The reason it's called backing fabric is purely because of the width of it, because um, it's lovely and wide. Um, this, you know, you could use this as a duvet cover, for instance. So if you had a, a lovely print on the front, this could be the back. Or you can, I mean, my boys would have this as a duvet cover, just as it is, grey. Um, my favourite, I have to say, even though it's pink, I have to say today my favourite is the blue, the jade blue. This is really beautiful. This came into stock on the 2nd, my son's birthday. It's now the 6th and we have just 10 metres left. So if you're looking at, this is a beautiful jade colour. I won't open it all the way out because it's exactly as wide as the other one there. But this is the jade colour. Look at this, beautiful. It's got this sort of scribble design all over it. It's really lovely. And I also like the fact that it's not just a print on the front. This is, this is the back, it's plain. The back is plain, but it's the same colour, same background colour. So that's the colour of the fabric. And then you've got the print on it is the scribble which is really nice. You really don't, I mean, this, this would be lovely for all sorts of things. I mean, you could make a big circular skirt out of this. I mean, a metre would make it, just a metre. Um, 108 inches wide, which is 280 centimetres. So that's how wide it is. Isn't that ridiculously wide? So that's wide enough to make a big quilt back, isn't it? Or a big duvet back. So it would cover that without having to have seams and things. So it's definitely a really good. And the, the price at eight ninety nine for half a metre. So basically, it's um, that's, so that's nine. That's eighteen pounds for a metre, just under, for for basically something that's nearly three metres wide. Crazy, absolutely crazy. So that is a really lovely piece of fabric. Good price, worth having, um, and I think that would make a lovely back for all sorts of different things. Then we have the other new colour is the pink. So again, it's exactly the same design, but with the pink background. Oh, somebody sent in a picture of dungarees they've made. Have you got it there to show? Oh, well, we haven't got it to show because we've shown it before. But uh, yeah, somebody made dungarees. Yes, you could. I mean, the fabric is beautiful. It's lovely and soft. It's a lovely soft cotton, sort of medium weight. It's not too thin or anything. This would make clothes beautifully. This really would. Um, you could certainly make lots of, you can make little girls' dresses out of this pretty pink or dungarees as somebody has already made. Circular skirt, as Kat suggested. Don't only think you can, all you can use this for is furnishings or quilting. You can use it for all sorts. It's a really lovely quality and it's that ridiculously wide piece, which means you don't need a lot. Um, and also because the design on it is sort of multi-directional, you haven't got to worry about it, everything being that way. It can go that way or, you know, so you've, you've got a choice here. You can cut on the bias if you want to. It's not going to spoil it. So I think this is really lovely. Very, very good piece of fabric worth having. Um, and yes, you could easily buy two metres and you're effectively getting, well, you know, almost sort of five metres. Is that five metres square? I never know how you work that out. But yes, if you've got a 2.8 metres that way and two metres that way, you've got a huge piece. Is what you've got and it's still only 395 pmp and of course if you've already bought something today the pmp is effectively free because you only pay it the once now let's just look at some of the other colors we've got three other colors here so the first one i've got here is this one here which is a sort of creamy color background with a beige swirl on it so it's the same design again the fabric is printed um, I find, let me find the code. Here it is. It's J O Y. So this is called natural. So again, it's eight ninety nine for the half meter, but do remember it's extra wide. It's hundred and eight inches wide, two hundred and eighty centimeters wide. Um, so very very wide piece, and half a meter is eight ninety nine. But if you want to get a meter, you're getting a meter times two point eight centimeters for under 19 pounds. That's really good, very good price. And then we also have the cream, and this has got a very fine white outline on it. 
Now this one is the same design. It might be a little bit more difficult to see because it's light on light. Can you see that? Let's move that out of the way. Yes, you can see that nicely, can't you? So it's a cream with a very fine line. So this is really lovely too. Again, I could see this as the back of a duvet cover or something where you've, you've created a beautiful duvet cover. I mean, if, even if you, want, if you want to keep your furnishings really quite sort of subtle, I've got cream bedding um, as one of my sets, which it's just nice, it's very calming, it's very serene. And this would be lovely just for that. And then you could add some decorative stitches, some trim, some lace to make it sort of heirloomy. Very, very nice. Um, and then we have the darker blue. This is the navy. So we've had this one before, um, but it's popular because it is a navy. So it's got a black squiggle on it. So it's black squiggle on the navy. So it's very, very pretty. Navy is always popular. It's really good. I mean, it's definitely good if you're quilting and things because it's a nice sort of basic colour that you can use to back things. Sort of nice navy. So eight ninety nine for the half metre. Don't forget the width is one hundred and eight inches or two hundred and eighty centimetres. Really beautiful. Well. One of the other things that we get on occasionally, and I know they're very popular with hand stitches, is silk thread. Now silk thread, we've got two here. Silk thread is really good for hand stitching. It's beautiful because it's very, very soft and it's fine. So what we have here is we've got two. So if I show you the first one, which is a creamy colour, There it is. So that's silk thread. Um, I'm just, it's, a y, it's a YLI, so it's a very good quality thread. There's 200 metres on the spool. So 200 metres on that spool there. So for hand stitching, it's actually perfect. It's so lovely and soft. If you do hand turn applique and things like that, you'll find it really useful. Also, actually, if you're sewing, even on the sewing machine, if you're sewing silk fabric, using silk thread is a good idea. So it's really beautiful. It's a hundred weight, yes. So it's quite fine. Standard threads is 40 or 50. It's, I don't know if I can actually get a thread end out of it. I don't think I can without, I don't want to take the label off. No, I can't. But it is very fine, very fine thread, lovely to sew with. So that's the creamy colour, seven ninety nine. It's two hundred metres on there, and then the other colour we have here is a natural. It's sort of a golden, golden beige, rose gold. Yes, very pretty colour, um, very useful to have. So these are really lovely threads to have. Uh, we get them in, then they go out of stock, and then we wait for them to come back in again. 200 metres on there, silk thread, really good for hand stitching, or if you're sewing with silk, silk garments and things, camisoles, etc., would be sewn beautifully with that lovely silk thread. But that's not the only thread we've got. We also have these threads. So these are Guterman, so a lovely brand, well-known brand of thread. And we've got two packs here, so I'll start with the blues. So this is a pack, there's 100 metres on each reel, and I have 10, 10 reels in the pack for 14 99 This is cotton. So if you are a quilter and you like to sew cotton fabrics with cotton threads, this one's for you. It's got a nice range of colours there, so blues going through to um, a, either a very dark blue or black, and then sort of more greeny hues going through as well. So very useful colour range. Fourteen ninety nine for ten reels makes it one forty nine per reel for a hundred meters on each. So that's really lovely. These are good, these are definitely good for quilting and things like that. And they're also you know, cotton is quite nice to use for top stitching because it's that little bit thicker than a polyester. So that's really nice. And then we have this one. This is more sort of summery colours. Summery autumn, yeah, autumn, because it's got sort of red, orange, or you know, going to yellow to cream, beige, and then going through the browns. And really and truly, if you're looking at buying some new threads, both would be good, uh, because you've got completely different colours in both sets. 
but just keep into this one for the minute, it's 14 99 This is your the sort of more autumnal or bright sort of red, Satsuma orange, sunset orange, <laughs> yellow, cream, beige, and then browns going through to the darker. So it's really, really lovely colours going there. So that is 100 metres per 10, 10 reels in the pack for 14 99 So that's a really good price for those. We're going to do another bundle next because we have another lovely bundle. Now this is Moda and Dwell in Possibility. Okay, Dwell in Possibility. So this is the bundle. If we, I just sort of open it up a little bit, look at this. So how many have we got in this one? Is it five and a half metres in total? So that's 11 pieces. We launched this the other day and it did sell very well. But we do have a few left in stock, hence we're bringing it back today. Um, so what it has here, it's got 11 pieces. Beautiful fabric, Moda fabric again. And it's sort of got metallic on some of them. So you've got metallic colours. But let's start with the first one. Let's, this is the first one. This is, look at these. Are they, they're butterflies or moths? Moths. Dainty moths. So we've got ivory and poppy. I mean, it's, and it's got like a gold metallic outline and little bits on it. So it's very, very pretty. And it's... <laughs> Elliot said he wouldn't call them dainty if they were real. No, they're quite big, aren't they, if they were real? <laughs> Not sure that they're 100% accurate on the sizing there. But, um, but they, I mean, moths are beautiful. So this is really lovely. Lovely, lovely prints. It's on a sort of creamy white background. And it's in rows. And it's multi-directional. Well, it's, it's two-directional because you can have them up either way. So you haven't got to worry about up the right way. They go, some are going that way, some are going that way. That's really pretty. And then we have the same design. So this is it all in this bundle, this bundle which has 11 different pieces. The same design here, or you can buy them by the half metre. So $7.99 by the half metre, or if you want the complete bundle of 11 pieces, it's £79.90. So because you're getting half a metre free then, aren't you? Yes, so you get half a metre free. If you buy the bundle as of half metres, 79.90, that means you're basically getting one of the um, pieces free. You can decide which is your free one. Or if you want to buy multiples, a bigger piece, then you buy them by, by the piece at 7.49 per half metre. So this is the same design here, but on this time we've got it sort of gold and silver. It's very, very pretty. But I love the sort of hint of opulence in the metallic gold. And then we've got the same thing again, but this time, this is called umber. Because it's, <laughs> it's unbelievable, says Elliot. Okay. <laughs> but again, same design. Beautiful um, gold and silver and black. And it really makes the detail stand out, doesn't it, with that background colour. So very, very pretty. Detail on them is beautiful. And also in the bundle, so that was those three. So you've got three of the same design but different backgrounds and therefore colours of moths. Done with moths. Now let's look at some flowers. Look at this. This is so beautiful. Look at this. Oh, we've only got a metre left of this. You can still buy the bundle. Um, but if you want it in meterage, we've only got a metre. Um, I think this is gorgeous. I was going to say this would make a lovely evening dress, but you can't because it's not got enough fabric. But you could make a nice bag. This would make a lovely evening bag. Make a metal frame bag or something. This would be beautiful. It's really, really sweet. It's, it's um, black background with sort of metallic coloured gold design all over it. It just looks so rich. So very limited on that. So if you, if you want it, nab it and check out because it's not yours until you've checked out. You can always come back. The same postage is all day. This one, 
the whole collection is about writers and authors, female writers and authors. Oh, they, oh okay, they call this one Flutter, but Kat says she likes it as quotation marks. She thinks it's more like quotation marks, little quotes, little quotes. So yeah, this is nice. It's sort of like an all over, it's like a spot, but not a spot. It's a dash. It's it's just makes it a bit different. That's really nice. And again, it's got that lovely metallic. And it goes beautifully with our writing one. Got to put this back away. So that is beautiful, isn't it? Again, talking selvages, it's got a lovely selvage sel selvage. That doesn't that go beautifully with that one? Look at that. So if you don't get the whole collection, these still work well together, so you can mix and match to suit yourself. So here we have a writing one, which is directional. And these, this is when you can see it's more about female writers. Dwell in possibility, says Emily Dickinson. The humblest tasks get beautified by loving hands, or if loving hands do them. Ah, oh, that's... Louisa May Alcott, who wrote Little Women. She seemed to walk in an atmosphere of things, something happen. I've lost some of that. Of things about to happen. That's L.M. Montgomery. Some nice little sayings. It is. You could cover a notebook. You could make a bag. It's even make a nice cushion. You could add this. This is, this is really lovely, it's sort of nice messages. If you've got um, somebody going off to, to college, or college or uni, you could certainly make something nice for them for that, especially if they're studying English. Then we have got this one. So this is a sort of spirally pattern. It's a mixed pattern, but again, it's got that lovely, it's got the lovely um, background color, sort of umber, and then you've got the gold, patterning on the top of it, which is really subtle and very pretty. Very rich looking fabrics, these. And they, the subtlety of that pattern kind of makes it look dimensional, even though it's flat. So very lovely. So we now have the same prints, but this time in this orangey background. So that design shows out more. So it's, look at the way it pops out here. It's really lovely. It does look a bit like fingerprints, doesn't it? Your finger swirls. Again, I'm not sure there's an up and or right side up or not. I kind of feel like it should be that way up, but I'm not sure because then those, then those are on the roof. So you can decide that, but those feel like they're sort of flowers. It is lovely, isn't it? Well, that way. I think you can have it whichever way you want, exactly. It's up to you. You just decide. But so that's really lovely. So that's on this sort of orange background, 749 for the half meter multiples if you want to buy more. And then they will come as one piece. And then we go back to this colour, the ombre. This is Little Bouquets, and this one is two-directional, so you can see they're both ways, so you haven't got to worry too much about that. They almost look like little sheep to me, but if I put my glasses on, they probably wouldn't. But <laughs> These are like little, little bouquets in, in rows. This is nice, very pretty. There is detail in here. It's not just plain white bouquets. They've got like little flecks in them. They're really sweet. And we also have this in um, other colorways. So we have it also in white. And look at this with gold white with gold flowers. 
so you've got this metallic gold on these little flowers. So it's a, it's a stripe with a difference, isn't it? So you've got some going this way, some going that way. So you haven't got to worry about up and down. Just really pretty. Lovely quality cotton. And then finally from this bundle, we have the same print, but we've gone back to the lovely sort of orange. Poppy, oh, poppy orange? Hmm, okay, poppy orange. Oh, I can't do this, it's not very poppyish to me, but um, so this is, this is an orange and the little bundles of flowers are white. So it's very, very sweet. So it's like a stripe, but a different stripe. Very pretty. Lovely quality fabric. So you could buy this 749 for half metre, or if you wanted two metres or three metres, then you just multiple the, the units. 7.99 for a half metre. If you want the whole bundle, of course, which is all 11 pieces, half a metre of each, then that is 79.90. So effectively, you're getting one for free. And you can decide which one it is that's your free one. So that's the lovely bundle that you get the whole lot together. Look at all of these, beautiful. They're really lovely, very good, lovely quality fabrics and these lovely moths. I prefer to think of them as butterflies only because you think of butterflies as beautiful and moths as... They are, they can be beautiful. But look at this lovely bundle, all of that, 79.90. So that is 11 pieces, so it's five and a half metres. Even if you don't, you, oh, you don't have to use it all in one project. Of course, you can break it down and use it in different projects. But you can put these different pieces together um, and create your own project using them in groups. I mean, these just, they just do look gorgeous together. So it's up to you how you, how you use them. And I've just put, I'm just putting threes together like that. But look. That goes there as well if you wanted to keep into that colourway. They go together beautifully, but they also go together with, if you want to mix up those, they go together too. So it's up to you how you use them. You certainly don't have to use them all together. Um, if you are making things for different people, you've, for instance, you've got three lots of the, of the moths, so you could have three variations. So make the same thing for three people, but you can vary it by the pretty prints. These would make lovely bags, lovely bags, um, all sorts of things you could use these for. Debbie Shaw's half, half Yard Heaven book might well give us some ideas. Let's have a look. This is, so it's another one of Debbie Shaw's books. One of her, what did she say the other day? She'd done 23, I think. 23 and she's writing a couple more at the moment. So 9.99 for the half yard heaven. So basically she's saying everything can be made from leftover pieces, but of course we're looking at these half, I mean these are half meters, but half, half meter heaven doesn't have the same ring to it, does it? So she said half yard, um, but you could use these half meter pieces to make these projects that are in here. So what we have in here, so again, as with all of her bags, beautiful photography. And then useful things to know. And then it will go on to techniques. So you've got the same as, as all of her books will have. They will have some techniques, techniques that you'll find useful for the projects in the book. And then go straight in, look, how to make a book bag. We were saying earlier, weren't we, that one of these prints here, the one with the writing on it, would make a lovely book bag cover. So that really would make a lovely book bag cover. And that half metre, 749, 799, 799 is what you would need. Wet white sachet cover. Handy. Tote bag. Any of these would make lovely tote bags. 
but it's, it's a tote bag with a difference. It's not a, a plain tote bag with just two sides. You've got some, some directional stripes here. So again, you could do that by mixing up makeup bag. So these are just easy things to make. Brush roll. But all, you could, of course, use it. You don't have to use it for brushes. Peg bags, still use peg bags. Pocket apron, that is handy to have if you're going to sewing classes and things, or of course for the garden. The pocket apron is really useful. And you can make it in more manly colours if you want to make it for him indoors. Glasses case, we always need those. Craft caddy, I've got one of these which I find really useful. Neck cushion, perfect if you're on long drives with the children. If you're travelling down to the south coast, not for me because I'm driving, but you know, for somebody that's not driving, it might be a nice idea. I love these, Owl and the Pussycat, they're just fun. Oh, look at this chicken doorstop. Now, it, that not that cute? I like that. I've seen chicken doorstops before, but I really like this design, tall and thin like that. So this is lovely. And then padded coat, I mean, just some very simple things here. I love these placemats. Just simple. Oh, I've got this fabric and I've made um, a kneeling mat actually because I made it out of the. There was a. What do you call it? It was plastic coated one that I used. Oven gloves, notice board, all these things that you can make. Lots of lovely ideas. Even slippers. Full of projects and the tips and techniques and the beautiful photography. Um, I'm just trying to see whether it doesn't actually say how many projects. Let's have a look because it got it on the back. 26 stylish projects. So 26 projects for 9 99 So Kat's going to quickly work that out to show uh, tell us how much that is per project. 38p a project. So even if actually you look through this, and I've just flicked through it just now, and you think, Do you know, I only like two things in there, which I, I would doubt because I think you'll find lots. But even if you did, even if you thought, you know what, I like that one and I like that one. You make those two things and you've still got value for money. You really have. But there would be lots of others. And she's got her tips and tricks in there. And the, you'll find uses for a lot of these. And then you can always pass it on if you don't. So just 9 99 Now we're just going to go to the break. And then after we come back, uh, Cara will be here with me again and she will be doing more cushion make. So we've got another kit. So it's another Helen Newman kit, as well as, as we mentioned earlier, our bundle of patterns that you can get with a five pound discount if you buy them. So that's really good. So we'll see you in just a few minutes. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day.
We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, welcome back. I hope you have been seeing some of the shows we've had earlier today. We've had some really fabulous things. And we had Cara Ackerman on doing a lovely applique cushion and she's back again to do another one. But this one is more aimed at the summer. So this hour, what we have got is we have got two different kits. We've also got the patterns on their own. And of course, also on the website, if you have a look, a lot of the tools and other bits and pieces that Cara uses when she creates these, like the quilting gloves, the H8020, uh, 8040, the applique mat, the friction pen, that sort of thing, they're all on the website too. So you can scroll down and you can get some of these things at the same time. But let's start with the Harbour cushion. And this is a Helen Newton pack again. So she's very well known for her quirky applique. Um, this is a really beautiful design uh, which I've got in front of me here. So what you get with this kit is you get the pattern which has got very clear, easy to follow instructions on how to create this and, in, and then make it up into a cushion. It also has the templates which are 100% size. So it's two pages of the templates there. It tells you how many to trace off for each one. This is when you're going to need bonder web as we were showing earlier on, so that's on the website if you want to look at that. The kit also comes with a fat quarter of cream, a half metre of the blue, and best of all, the amazing panel. This is fantastic. So as we had this morning, we had a panel with 25 different fabrics. I'm going to have to count these ones, aren't I? We've got this panel here. So what you have is you've got all of the different fabrics that you're going to need to create the picture. So there's, that's, that's the cushion. You've got all of the fabric you need to create that. So you haven't got to go looking into your uh, remnants box to find a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You've got everything here. I will count those in a minute when um, Cara starts her thing. They are, oh, let me, let me turn it up the right way. Yes, Kat, they are labelled. So you've got lighthouse, door, 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 boat hull, boat hull, boat hull. You don't have to do that. You could change your mind if you wanted to. But it is if you want to recreate the picture that Helen has done, it's very easy to do following all of this. So that's half of the panel. And then the other half of the panel. So here we have the houses, smaller cloud. And then this is the border. So you've got that for the border. And as I said, you've also got the blue for the backing and the cream. And I'm not sure what that's for, but I'm sure Cara will tell us what the cream fat quarter's for. It's the um, centre panel. The centre panel, there we are. So you're getting all of that for $21.99. So the pattern, the panel, which has been specially printed for us, this is a Sewing Street exclusive panel, 
half a metre of the blue, fat quarter of the cream, 21.99. Now we can do the instructions on their own, of course. So the instructions on their own are 9.99. And they, you can use up your scraps. I mean, they, lots of the pieces you need are tiny. They really are. So if you've got, I mean, as Carla said earlier, keep all your scraps because you never know when you're going to want to use them. So you can indeed use up all of your scraps. And if you are going for the pattern alone, it does tell you exactly what you need and how to cut out. And then adding the borders, preparing the applique, etc., all the way through, easy steps to follow. And of course, you've got the lovely picture on the front if you want to place everything exactly as Car has done. Oh, I should say Helen. Mm -hmm. I know you've done it, but Helen designed <laughs> it. <laughs> um, now, we do have an extra special bundle today, which is six of Helen's patterns. There's six of them. So we have the elephant. Now, we've got the elephant. Um, we've got the elephant here shown as a cushion. Um, but you know, uh, sorry, here it's a cushion, but we've got it as a bag on the on the stand next to me. So we've got that bag. Isn't that beautiful? So you don't have to make it into a cushion. You can do this front panel like this. It's just when you get to the instructions to do the cushion back, you just substitute that for a bag back. And again, you've got the templates with all of these. Look at this mummy elephant and baby elephant and the ears. They're so sweet. And then you get the instructions. Then we have the flower shop. So this is another one. So again, you get this lovely pattern and the instructions and the templates. So each time you get the pattern, clear instructions with your pretty picture on the front to show you if you want to follow that layout exactly, that's how you do it. So it's a really good way of using up your scraps. This is washing line. This is, and this is great for free motion. So a lot of these are with free motion as well, but you can add hand stitching, which you're going to show, aren't you? Yes. I'm saying I'm talking to Carla then. <laughs> I'm, I'm nodding my head, but She's I, should say, <laughs> I should say yes. <laughs> for the sake of the tape. <laughs> <laughs> All of these do have demos on YouTube. So you can show, search Cara Ackerman and you should find these demos. This is a Japanese girl. And I think we've got a sample. Oh yes, that's, be that's <laughs> it's behind me. It's actually, it's behind Cara. <laughs> Japanese girl, that's really lovely. We have got, of course, the two new ones. So this is the fun in the puddles that we were showing earlier. I say we, this is the royal <laughs> way, obviously, that we were showing you how to make earlier. Um, so this is the one that Cara was doing earlier on. It's fun in the puddles. And then we've got the one that she's going to be showing us today, the harbour. So you can get all of these, all six of these, for $54.94. Now, we know a lot of you have got them, but this is your first time with Helen Newton. And you fancy, I mean, these are just quirky appliques. They really are. Um, lovely to look at. And if you fancy having a go, $54.94. 94 for all six of these patterns and that actually saves you five pounds today which is more than the PMP if it's the first thing you've bought now you've also seen the elephant in the bag but we do have a bundle for that one so again the bundle includes the pattern so the pattern is for the cushion but the front of it is the same for the bag the only difference really would be that when it says making the cushion back, you don't. You'll make a bag back and handles. Um, so you get the pattern. You get a metre, sorry, a half metre of pink, which is your backing. You also get a fat quarter of cream. And then you get the amazing panel. I love these panels. I really do. And then you get this panel. So this panel, again, it has all the different colours that you need. And if I turn it up the right way, again, they've been labelled. So it says baby girl earlobe, baby boy earlobe. So you can co copy the design exactly if you wish. And obviously this is the elephants. Isn't that sweet? So this is 19 
um, this is these are the options that we've got for this show and of course we have got all of the other tools the interfacing the quilters gloves etc etc so do look on the website for those because we don't want to sort of waste time we're mentioning when, when Cara uses them but we want to get on with the demo so the harbour yes and it could be anywhere couldn't it could be you know um, anywhere in the UK really I think um, and I hope we're all dreaming of those holidays by the sea. So um, it's just so beautiful. Um, just before I start, if I can say in the elephant bundle, that one's just for the cushion. If you actually want to make the bag, you will need extra pink fabric right. for the back of the bag. And then you'll need some extra for the lining. So I just wanted to sort of make that clear. So when you get the bundle um, for the elephant, that is to make the gorgeous cushion so it's, it's plenty in there to make the cushion it's just if you want to make the bag you will need a few extra bits and pieces thank you okay sorry and um, back to the harbour um, I don't know how much you want me to go through all the different bits and pieces but we did cover quite a lot in the um, first hour for doing um, tracing the applique pieces onto the bond web etc etc so I wanted to spend a bit more time this time with the machine applique um, free motion and then also go into other bits and pieces that you can do with Helen's designs because there's loads. I, th I think that's a nice idea because anybody that didn't see the first show can can yes. catch up can't yes. they, on YouTube so yes. if you didn't see Cara's show when she showed how to use the Bonder web, how to apply the applique etc do check out that show from earlier on. That was at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock this morning. It? So it, it was nine o'clock this morning. Hours ago. <laughs> Very crazy. Um, but so let's go sort of go on from there. I think that's a nice idea. Yeah, no problem. So what I did um, in the break was actually um, put the pieces on this harbour design. And as I say, it's just so beautiful. Um, sort of dreaming of you know, the, the skies, the blue skies and things like that. But I'm afraid we have got a few rain clouds here as well, which <laughs> is uh, typical of British holidays. Um, sometimes, not all the time. And this is a lovely one because you have um, the printed fabric for all the different sections. So you were asking about the cream fabric. That is your base for the centre panel. And then you actually cut out pieces from the printed panel and those are applied onto the backing fabric. So we have the lovely brick fabric here and a darker brick fabric here, which gives a real three-dimensional effect there. There's also some fabric on the panel for the C, um, which is here. And then you leave the cream um, panel for the actual sand and also the sky there. Um, then on the panel, you'll also have the fabric for the outer edge. So I just wanted to sort of go through that a little bit. What I also did um, in the break was draw on with the friction pen. So actually when you're looking at this from a distance, it looks like it's all been machined, but it hasn't. <laughs> so um, I'm going to do a few, um, just a, a couple of bits. I'll let Wendy choose which bits she would like me to show. Well, just before you do, 34 different fabric prints. Goodness me, on here? On there. Wonderful. Yes, on this panel. This is why the panels are so beautiful, aren't they? They are. I mean, I know we've all got remnants and scraps, but, you know, finding 34 that coordinate will be quite hard. So I, I know. Think, you know. This makes life easier. Yes, so which bit are you going to do? What should we, what should we make you do this time? <laughs> we could <laughs> let Kat choose or Elliot choose or anybody else um, choose. You want, um, Elliot and Kat want to do the lighthouse. The lighthouse is fine. So I'll just show you on the lighthouse here. So the lighthouse is built up. There's a plain-ish fabric for the background. It's sort of like a stony effect. I don't know whether that, that's coming out very clearly on there. But um, that's the background. And then you're doing the red stripes are actually pieces that are applied on top. Then we've got the top of the um, lighthouse there. And you've even got a piece of the fabric. And if you look on the panel, the fabric on the panel um, for the light on the lighthouse oh, is one. wonderful. It is. I, let me got, find it. It's got, um, it's got the light. <laughs> it's got the light there, but you're only cutting out a tiny, tiny little bit. But um, if you wanted to put a sun in the sky, can you see that? Or stars, or you know something like that. You can you can use that panel for something else. But um, that's the light at the top of the lighthouse there. And it says lighthouse lamp. 
and also um, what I found as well, actually laying the pieces onto the, the background panel, it's useful to start from the top and start with the light. And as I showed in the first hour, if you lay it on there before you press, so start from the top and work your way down and then that will help you with the positioning of the bricks and everything there and then that in turn will help you with the positioning of the C. So if you start from the top, because if you actually laid um, where you thought the bricks was, uh, needed to go and where the C needed to go, you might find that you run out of space for the rest of the lighthouse. Um, so that's how you'll um, put all the pieces on there before you press it, then you'll press it to adhere it. And you'll see that the lighthouse has gone in front of one of the clouds as well. So you want that cloud to go behind. Um, so let's have a little go here. So I'm going to start with the light at the top. So again, feed dogs down and we're going to put the lever down at the back and then that thread's going to come out if I go any further. Are you using the same colour thread for all of the free motion or do you change it to depend on what you're working I've, on? I've changed mine. I'm just going to bring the thread through. I've changed mine. So for this particular one, I think I'm using um, a grey because the grey goes nicely with the harbour design, but it also goes nicely with the elephant. So I've used a really, really dark grey, but it's entirely up to you what you would like to use. Um, so you wouldn't say where the lighthouse is, use red on the red stripes? No. Nope. Nope. So you're just using it as it's, an outline, it's, really? It's personal preference. It really is personal preference. If you wanted to, you could use red, but it wouldn't stand out so much, so you wouldn't get um, that sketched effect. Mm. You know, um, there's certain things that on the... Um, elephant one there are some white flowers and actually for the petals on the flowers I used white thread and that was better um, but having said that I have used um, sort of a dark grey on the flowers as well so it's a, a personal preference it's it's not sort of set in stone it's entirely up to you what you would like to do and again this means that everybody's will be different it will be yes absolutely right Sorry about that. I just could see that the thread was such that um, if I started stitching, it might disappear completely. So, I'm just going to go around the top of the light here. And again, I've got, I'm, I'm really comfortable with the speed that I've got this sat at. So, a couple of stitches at the beginning and the end and we can either cut that off or we can go over to the next part. So I'm just going to do the top of the lighthouse here. And again, you're going round everything twice. Um, and don't worry if your lines aren't exact. I think it, um, it adds to the charm of the design if they're, if they're not. Definitely. And you're just using regular sewing thread? Yes, it's Gutterman. Um, I've got a mixture of threads at home, so I have used, I have used cotton threads or polyester, um, but obviously don't mix the two. So I'm just going around the top of the lighthouse here. And when you get back to the beginning, do a couple of stitches in one place. I'm lifting my needle, lifting the lever, and then just coming over all those excess threads where you have gone from one area to another, you can actually cut at a later stage. I'm going through quite a few layers of um, fabric here, so you can hear, I'm hoping you might be able to hear the machine sort of changing. And don't be worried, it's just the number of um, layers of fabric that I'm going through. This is why you said earlier about putting a new needle in, isn't it? Yes. Because you are going through different yes. levels of fabric. You're going through the different levels of fabric, um, layers of fabric. You're also going through the bond web and you're also going through the medium interfacing or the stitch and tear on the back 
of the cushion and that is the stabiliser. So you are going through quite mm. a few different layers and especially where you've got, you know, fabric going over fabric as well, you're, you're going through double the amount. Um, so I'm going to go down to the bottom of the lighthouse and then back up. But I'm actually going to go across and down and back up and then across and across again. So you'll find different ways of making sure that you're going only over the pieces once, first time, and then twice the second time. Um, and it is possible to do that. It just, in your head, you have to sort of think, oh, right, if I go that way, then I've already been there. But don't worry, you can just go around twice as you're stitching. If I'm, that makes sense. It's all right, I'm <laughs> concentrating. I, I tell you what, I've just noticed, because I was I'm looking at the pattern and everything, and on the pattern you've got um, the wall, and then you've got wall continued. Yes. And then on the front, you can see it's a slightly different colour. Yes. So I thought, is that on our fabric bundle, is that a slightly different colour? And yes, it is. Yes. So you've got harbour wall, and you've got harbour wall continued, clearly labelled. It's just so good. This really is so good. There you go. So that's um, your lighthouse from the top. And as I say, you just snip off the extra threads as you go. So you haven't got extra threads sort of going across and it just finishes it off beautifully. So that was for Kat and for Elliot. <laughs> Um, okay, shall I do another one? I, I want you to do the, the steps and the bricks on the wall. Yes. Because no those aren't on, they're not printed on, so you've no. had to draw them on and now you're going to stitch around them. Yes, so um, just going to, so this is the steps. When you're laying this onto um, the backing fabric, what I did was I um, overlaid the larger piece of brick fabric over the top of the other harbour brick fabric and um, just overlaid it slightly mm -hmm. and again that gives that three-dimensional effect and then just um, hand by hand you can just um, just come down here draw the bricks on and it just adds to extra texture which is really nice And please note, I'm not following the friction line exactly because when you press it afterwards, that line disappears. Yes, it doesn't matter, does it? No. So to do the to do the little individual bricks or little individual gr grouping, you're just you just move the fabric. You don't have to yep. turn it round, stop, no. and pivot, and no, not at all. Um, this is the beauty of free motion. Actually, do one over here. So, if I show you, so I'm going to have a go at doing this part here. Sorry, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> so, just this part here, which I've drawn on by um, freehand friction pen, and then there, and I'll show you how you just do that. If, again, you're not very experienced and you haven't got um, enough confidence to do that, you can actually engage the feed dogs, and you can do it vertically and horizontally, but you move your fabric. Um, because you're not actually determining which yes. direction the fabric goes in. So that's entirely up to you. You can do that. And for all of it, you can do. If you feel confident in doing curves and things like that, the only difference is that you'd be moving your fabric round. Yes, like and you'd have to stop the, the needle down, stop raise the, the presser down. foot, move yep. it round. Yeah. Yep. This think, is so much quicker, isn't it? Yeah, the other thing is, I'll just show you whilst I'm here. Um, we did talk at one of the other programs um, about using different stitches on the machine. And you can use, there's a blanket stitch on quite a few machines. So you can use a blanket stitch to go around the edge 
of the um, shaped pieces, or you can use the zigzag. So, you know, you can use your machine with the different stitches and everything and go round the pieces um, using the different stitches. Free motion or? No, that's not free, free motion. That would be with your um, feed dogs up and your um, everything engaged. Yes. So you would, um, the machine would need to move the fabric for you, but then you would turn and do it. You it, could do a combination of both then. You can, definitely, definitely, definitely. Right, so I'm just going to do the squares here for the bricks. I just love the fact that Helen has sort of suggested just little differences and it just adds texture and three dimension to an actual design. So I'm just going around the um, bricks and you can see I'm, I haven't actually put my um, quilting gloves on. I'm just using my hands, so it is possible to do it without quilting gloves. But they just help though, don't they? Yeah, you do, definitely. They really do help. And if you want it to look a bit more pronounced, you can actually go around it three times. Have you ever seen Richard Box Boxes work? Richard Box. Have I? Yeah. No. No. He does free motion um, and a lot of it is sort of 3D and he doesn't go over two or three times. He goes over multiple oh times. Oh gosh. Absolutely amazing. It's incredible with free motion how you can affect the appearance of something by going over lots of times but also the, link, the length of the stitch yes. as well. On the elephant one I will show you how to do like an eye. So you're going to be doing a circle. So as I say, I've gone round the bricks three times there. Julie McBride has said, can you zigzag free motion and do you have to set a stitch size? Um, let's try. You can zigzag free motion. Oh, there you go. Yes. Um, um, so and how yeah. would you... Would you, you just select the zigzag stitch. Um, let's find the zigzag stitch. Number 11, I think. I'm going to put my needle in. Oh, gee, I never do when I change the stitch. Okay. Yeah, because your needle might move over. Yeah. Okay, I've got um, number 11. And again, it's not going to move unless you move it. No. So you don't set the stitch length. I'll, I'll show you where this would work really well. So that's me moving. I'll show you um, on the overhead camera. Just clear that. So that was with a zigzag. And depending on how quickly you moved your fabric would determine the actual distance between the zigzags. So when I was moving the fabric quite quickly, you got sort of like um, a more staggered line there. And then when I was moving it slowly, it was more like a zigzag. But when I show you some of the other um, designs that, well, I can show you now actually. Um, okay, so let's just have a quick look. There's your bricks. So that's just going round the shape. It and there's your steps. It just makes so much difference, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. And you know, you were saying about colour. If you actually used a stone colour thread there, you wouldn't see the steps so mm. clearly. So that's what's beautiful. Same here. If you used a lighter colour, you wouldn't see the bricks so clearly. So that's how that works really well. Um, and as I say, practice. Cut something out and practice, you know, just until you're happy and comfortable with using the machine and everything. Um, even down to the actual windows on the um, houses and everything. They're just like the bricks, just going round in a square. Um, and that just gives the windows a little bit more depth to them. So, OK, so that's the harbour one. You've got plenty of fabric left over, so you can play around with it. And what I wanted to um, talk about, if it's okay, 
was actually using the designs for different projects. So um, this was my practice one. So we were talking about different coloured threads. So you can see here we've got our flowers. And because they're outlined in white against a white background, you can't see them so clearly. But when you actually look at the ones on either the bag or the cushion, the white petals are against a, a darker background. So you can see them more clearly. Um, but they're actually stitched in white. So they make them look like white flowers, which is really nice. So this was the elephant one. And then I wanted to show, I'm not sure if Kat can share with you, but um, it was really funny. Before I came to this show, um, the girls were saying, oh, you know, it would be nice to show people how to do, um, you know, use the designs in different ways. And the next day after they said that, Helen posted these images on her website. Um, her Instagram page and they are just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and that shows what you can do isn't that absolutely fabulous then there's a mixture so you've got um, hand embroidery you've got the applique and you've got the free motion embroidery as well but it's just stunning and it was so strange I sort of messaged Helen back and I said oh my goodness you know we are hoping to do something like this on the show so um, it was just so nice to see Helen's interpretation as well so um, so I wanted to share a few with you please do because I think they are absolutely gorgeous <laughs> and I like I'm just trying to see if I can see that little chap he's not on any of these patterns. no he's not um, no I just think the fact that you can take this design which you know you can you can buy it for 19 that one the elephant one for 1999 including the fabric panels etc and then use the templates to create other things so get multiple use out yes of um i know on the website we have got um the wooden embroidery hoops which is fantastic lots of different sizes i brought a few of mine from home as well so um you can play around with different sizes and things like that so it doesn't have to be a huge project it could even just be a flower in the middle of a hoop and um, you know that and just add bits and pieces and uh, I love hand embroidery absolutely love hand embroidery but it was just so nice to sort of take the elements and have a go and um, I can't remember the name of the lady but the lady who asked about using a zigzag with free motion and oh, yes. um, what you could do and this is what reminded me is that this is just I've marked it with a friction pen but this could be grass so this is where you can change your color a little bit more and um, because it's plain piece of fabric, you can actually add colour. So if you had a green thread on your machine and use that free motion zigzag, you could actually create the grass across here and across here, which would be lovely. So really, really nice. And then I've added um, a few stitches here. So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, I'm just um, just want to I know we, we have mentioned this but Margaret says what stitch length is needed for free motion sorry if you said it got my three-year-old grandson oh. so busy with him <laughs> p.s. Cara is great she oh, said oh thank you so just reiterate the stitch length generally speaking for free motion it would be zero and some of the machines as soon as you put um, the darning foot on or your free motion foot on it will revert to zero so it will actually um, you know come back to zero um, so that's what we would suggest but um, or as near as zero as you can yes, get because some machines yeah. will only go down to point two yes, yes so yeah okay so whilst I was going to do this I thought oh and this is a new product just bring it in and it's a fully adjustable vers versatile seat frame can you see it there and this is perfect if you're doing stitching on a live show and somebody's going to have to get in close because when I'm embroidering, I tend to move my hoop around. So you wouldn't be able to see what I was stitching, especially if Elliot got in close. But this is lovely. Except for we can't sit down. So No, we can't sit down. So this, <laughs> this panel is um, used and you would sit on the panel or you, that would be somewhere um, you know, near. It could be under your leg. Um, or you could sit on it and it has these lovely different sort of 
knobs and uh, brackets and different things like that. So you can actually adjust this up. So I'll just loosen that slightly. And this comes up. Can you tilt it as well? It looks like you yes, the top. so I've pulled that up quite high. So I'll just pull that in. So that's now nice and secure. And loosen this knob here and that tilts the actual frame as well. And then to help, I'm going to just pop my frame in here. So loosen that up. So this, this is a um, frame holder. It doesn't come yes. with any frames, does it? It doesn't come with any frames at all. And you would just <coughs> pop that in there and then tighten it up and it would just hold your hoop nice and securely. I need to just loosen it up again and pop that in properly. I've only just seen this this morning. I know, it's lovely though, isn't it? And yes. I like the ones that you can sit on or put under yes. your legs because it does mean you haven't got to hold the frame when you're working on it. So that's how that one goes. And then you can tilt it. Is there, is there a limit to the size of the frame that you can put No, in you can put any, any of those frame. on. The only thing that I would say is if you're doing something with a very, very big frame, just be careful if you're stitching over this side, you might actually want to turn your hoop, so you're stitching nearest the, the center, just for strength, I suppose. So what I'm going to do is just show you then how easy it is just to add a few stitches. So Elliot has suggested that you could actually get two frames if you're working on a very big hoop. Yes, definitely. And then you could put definitely. that, you have to make sure you get it. Yeah, the only thing He's is... He's a genius, he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the only thing is, Elliot, this is supposed to be a, a frame for sitting on and you wouldn't be able to you'd sit have to on have a leg. You'd have to have one, <laughs> one under each leg, wouldn't you? <laughs> Keep okay. it steady. Um, I've just tied a knot and I don't normally tie a knot in, in embroidery. Oh, I'll tie a knot and I'll do it from the front. So you can see with the friction pen, I've actually drawn some lines here. I'm not going to move this, so you can get in as close as you need to. Okay, so I've drawn some of the lines uh, on, on the pattern with the friction pen and this is where you can mix and match. So if you wanted to, you could actually do all of this in free motion and then you can add the hand stitching afterwards. So I'm going to add some stems here and a little bit of grass. So I'm starting with two strands of stranded cotton. There's lots and lots of different colours of stranded cotton on the website and you might have some in your stash that you can just sort of mix and match and decide what colours to um, stitch with and it's just an embroidery needle. I've actually tied a knot and I'm going to be starting about an inch away from where I'm going to be working and for the grass there I'm just going to do a stem stitch so I've, I've used two strands of stranded cotton and you do a step forward and a stitch back and my thread is coming down that way and you can just do a few lines of stitching there and this is when I get to my real happy place because I love hand embroidery I've got into it more and more actually oh. I like mixing I love embellishing, embellishing. Yeah, yeah I love definitely. absolutely embellishing so then I'm going to um, go up the side of the stems here And I just said I wasn't going to move. I'm not going to move it away. I'm just going to tilt that round slightly. And again, a stitch forward and a stitch back for stem stitch. You could do it with back stitch. You could do just straight lines. You know, it's entirely up to you. And don't feel that you've got to stay on the friction pen lines because they'll disappear once you... So there's only three stitches there. So it's really, really quick to do. I'm coming back down to the bottom. What I would normally do is turn it over and weave my needle back through the stitches on the back. I won't do that, but that's what I would normally do. I'm just going to turn that round slightly. So if this was, if you had this um, under your leg, yeah. 
you wouldn't be able to keep turning it round. So what no. would you do? What I would do is use this. You would release that it. and then yes. turn it. Yes. Or move the hoop round. But I just love that you can add just a few bits of applique and a few hand stitches and make it something really, really different. I love the idea of having these pieces either, um, you know, use the hoops as frames and yes. then you have like a whole different uh, size, se selection of sizes yes. and a montage of framed pieces. Definitely. Um, or as um, Helen had done in, in little picture frames. Oh, I know. Don't they look lovely? I, oh, those lovely white picture frames. So that's my little stems and my little bit of piece of grass. I'm actually going to do a few French knots now. So again, I'm going to start with um, a knot on the right side. And once I've done some stitches and I've held that thread in place, then I'll be able to snip the knot off. So I'm just going to do a few French knots here. So this, I've used three strands of stranded cotton here. Wrap your needle around, wrap your needle, <laughs> wrap your thread around your needle about three times, makes a nice size French knot. And be, again, very um, relaxed and don't be tense when you're doing hand embroidery. Pull the thread up along the needle until you're left with the knot that's close to the fabric. Then again, it's quite loose here, but you want to hold on to it, but not tightly. And then pass your needle back through fabric and that's your French knot so you can do a few of those and the other thing that you can do which I'll show you is you can add beads as well little seed beads and I know on jewelry maker that they do little seed beads mm. and I think they would they're just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous well they've got good deals on at the moment because it's their birthday hence the oh, balloons that we have there you go they're 11 years old goodness me that's amazing, isn't it? It's wonderful. R really, really good. So as I say, I'm just doing a few French knots here. And can you imagine that all repeated around here? Mm. And then if you did your zigzag line in green stitches, you've already done your free motion around the elephant. And then he's blowing little bubbles. So what we're going to do, I'll move my needle to turn that and just tilt that back okay um got some beads somewhere i think it's nice adding the texture and you can do this to the cushion as well couldn't you yes you could just you know just as easy to the cushion so these He's are going to blow green bubbles. <laughs> these are the little seed seed bubbles or seed beads, and you want to work with a needle that will pass through without um, getting stuck. So you might have to make sure that you've got quite a fine um, needle, an embroidery needle, and um, just a single strand of stranded cotton for attaching these. You might need to use a needle thread. If you get beading yes. needles, the eye of the needle is, is no wider than the stem no. of the needle. Yeah. No. So they can be tricky to thread. So um, I've done a knot on the end of the thread. I've put my needle actually through the fabric and then I'm just going to carefully, if I can see, pass the needle through the eye of the bead, eye of the bead, the hole of the bead. <laughs> and then you do a little stitch to the side because you've got um, your thread going through the center of the bead and you want your bead to actually sit on its side so you don't see the hole. That's um, why you do it like that. So when I've pulled that, that's the bead actually there. And it is a little bit like a bubble, I think. Oh, it's lovely. And I just love the fact that you're, you know, combining very, very simple hand embellishing techniques onto something that started as a cushion or as a, a panel for a bag. Just bear in mind when you're going across the back that um, don't go with a very dark thread because I'm actually leaving the long 
length of thread on the wrong side. So yes, a light well a thread that matches the bead, I guess, yes. helps, doesn't it? Yes. But if you use dark beads, I guess you'd want to put a light thread in yes. even so. Otherwise you'll see all those strands, won't you, going seeing through. Oh, I could do this all day. Can I just stay here all day? I know, <laughs> this is the trouble. I I'd find this. I find um you know, adding hand embroidery and beading and things. I do it in the evening when I'm watching yes. television. Um, it keeps me off my iPad for nothing <laughs> else, but um, it's just relaxing, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is so relaxing. And it does make it just look so special, I think. So there you go. So I've added a few um, little beads there. So that's one of the ways that you can add texture and embellishment. Another way that I wanted to show you, um, so that's the new frame and it's lovely. I'd, I'd really like to sort of have more of a go with that. Uh, pop that to one side. It does look nice and sturdy and I like the fact that the base is quite big to yes. pop under your legs. It'd be easy to keep it there in place. The other frame that you have on the website and this one I couldn't actually get underneath um, the table. The table's a little bit too yeah, our, deep. Our tabletops are very deep, aren't yes, they? Yes, yes. But this is another one where um, if you've got a larger piece, this is a lovely frame and um, that will clamp usually onto a table. But as I say, these are quite deep tables. These are more like um, the depth of um, a kitchen counter. It is. It's like a, it is a kitchen counter. Yes, yes. Yes. But you know, if you've got a table at home, that you are comfortable and happy sitting at. Um, it may be one of those tables that you can swing over. If you're sitting in a nice armchair or something, you've got a table that you can swing over to where you're sitting. This is a lovely, um, another lovely frame to sort of work with. That and one comes with a 10 inch hoop attached. Yes, it yeah. comes with a 10 inch hoop attached. And this is another one that um, I've started. And this is um, actually for a friend that's had a little baby girl so I've taken a mixture of the applique designs and just put that together. Again, with the friction pen, I've made the dark circle, uh, dark circle around the outside. I also, I didn't hand write the name, I'm afraid. My writing is not good enough for that. So if you go um, out and if you've got a printer, you can actually type in what you want to say and then you can play around with the different fonts on the um, computer and different sizes until you're happy and comfortable with what you've got. And if you print that out on a piece of paper and then you can, again with a light box or something like that, you can then put your fabric over the top and trace it onto your fabric, which is what I've done here. And then I um, will either free motion that, I did free motion this one, and doing lettering is slightly different to doing your normal free motion. So ag again, I'd suggest that you practice it. And this was me practicing it. I hadn't done it before, but this was me practicing it. And um, it's lovely because you can put whatever you want on there. You can put congratulations or wonderful news or something like that. When um, I teach free motion to absolute beginners, one of the first things I get them to do is write their name. Yes. Because as you say, it makes you move up and yes. down and round and round. Yes, and yes, which is really good. So that um, makes something a little bit more personal there. So um, I've got this lovely design. So I'm going to have a mixture of um, free motion embroidery and also hand embroidery. And then I will um, press it so I get rid of all the um, outside and then get a frame to put it in or what you can do is once you've done all of that, you can actually put that into the center of a quilt um, or put it on a bag or, you know, put it anywhere and add some of the fabric that you've got. You know, that pink fabric is mm. so glorious. Um, you know, you can pick a, a, the chartreuse color. You can pick sort of whatever color you like and then add that panel to a quilt, which would be really nice to welcome a new baby. So. Um, yeah, so there's loads and loads of things. So what I wanted to sort of say was when you're looking at Helen's designs, don't just think they are for cushions. They can be used for bags. They can be used in lots and lots of different ways. So I hope I've given you sort of just a few um, intros into what you can do with your um, free motion and your applique. So I think that's been brilliant. Thank you. 
Oh, I loved it. And I like to think that you can get multi-use out of them. Definitely. And when you've got fabric left over and it, it all coordinates, it's lovely to sort of use it for something else. So, um, yeah. That's really lovely. So if you want the elephant bundle, we have got all oh, cats just looking five five oh, left goodness. of the elephant bundle so just to remind you what that is so you get the pattern and then if you look in the pattern here you've got all of the templates you've got the instructions step by step and then all of the templates that you need which Cara has just shown you can use those same templates for other things but you also get a fat quarter of the cream which is the background for the applique um, the pink, which is the border and the back of the cushion by the looks of it. Um, and then you also get the panel. And this panel is lovely. Even if you're thinking of doing a hoop, you can still use the panel. Let me turn it up the right way because I like the fact that everything is written on here. So you've got the panel here and it says balloons, baby girl earlobe, baby boy earlobe. These are so sweet, aren't they? So you've got it all laid out here and of course elephant here. So that's on the panel. So that saves you having to sort of think about which fabric shall I put together? Have I got enough of the grey to make the elephants, etc. You've got it all on this lovely pre-printed panel, which is printed specially for us. So that's the um, elephant kit. Now we can do the elephant instructions on their own as well. So they are just 9 99 So if you feel you do have plenty of fabrics and you don't need these ones, then you can get the instructions on their own for 9 99 But don't forget, we also have a bundle. So again, if you really like these designs and you are looking for something to make for different occasions, but you love these applique ideas, get this bundle of six. So what we have is we have the uh, harbour, which Carver started with this hour. We have the fun in the puddles, which is the one that she did in the earlier session. But we also have the elephant, which she's just looked at. And we also have three more. So we have the Japanese girl. So we've got a cushion up on the side there showing this one. This is really cute. We have washing line, and this is something that um, gets taught at the shows quite a lot, just doing a washing line. It's a very quick way of learning to do free motion and moving the fabric where you want it to go. And then we have flower shop, which is a really, I love this one as well, this lovely flower shop one. And each time the pattern comes with full instructions on how to put the whole thing together, including everything you're going to need, because if you're not getting the panel, of course, you need to find all these different fabrics. So you've got all the fabrics you need, and then it's got the templates, and it tells you on the templates what they're all for. So you've got your templates there. So it's very simple. That's, so that's six patterns. So we've got six patterns there for 54.94, and that saves you five pounds if you were to buy them individually. So this hour we launched new The Harbour, which is this one. So if you want the whole kit, which I think is such good value, so it's £21.99 and for that you get the pattern with the clear instructions with all of the templates, door times three, C extension, look at that, you've got everything you need including, and I love this, you've got the harbour wall and the wall continued. So you've got everything there. Then you have, for your background, for the cushion front, you have a fat quarter of cream. You have the blue for the border and the back. No, this is the back. The border's on the panel. This is for the back of the cushion. And then you have the panel, and I counted 34. Don't, don't quote me on that, though, but I counted 34 different fabrics. This is just half of it. This is just half of it. So we've got here sailing boat hull, two boat covers, boat, boat bow, etc. So they're all clearly labelled, all the different things, the roofs. I think this is so lovely. And then if I flip it over, you've got the rest. So here we've got the houses. I like the idea of a checked house. And then the clouds. So these are exclusive to Sewing Street. These panels are created for us. 
and I think that is a really good value to get all of those fabric pieces, 34 different fabric pieces. I don't know where this sticker comes from. This would be, this would be a lovely Father's Day. This is for his shed. You could have a lovely cushion in, in uh, the man oh, cave, yeah, couldn't you? Definitely. Or in a motor home. These would make lovely motor home ones. Oh, we've had a question. Eileen has asked us, what has she asked us? Morning, everyone. When free motioning the cushions, do you need to bring your lower thread up? Loving the show, and that's Eileen from Cumbria. So when you start, do you bring yes. your lower thread up? Yes, your lower thread comes, uh, well, no. Um, no, on free motion, I leave mine underneath the do, fabric. I know some people do bring it some up, Some people actually. bring it all the way through. I think quilters bring it all the way through, don't they? Yes. If they're doing um, sort of quilting on a, a, a quilt. Um, but I, as long as your um, thread, sorry, I've taken the free motion off. As long as your thread goes through um, the actual um, darning hole, if you like, um, and your spool thread comes up but I leave my spool thread underneath. If you wanted to, you could bring them both to the top and pull them to one side. And then once you've done a few stitches, you can actually cut them both off. Um, you know, that's perfectly all right. But um, everybody finds their own way of doing mm. it. So it's not essential? No, it's not essential. No, definitely not. Thank you, Cara. That's okay. We can't stop her though. She's busy, <laughs> busy doing embroidery there now. So let's just have a look at quickly at some of the other pieces that Carl was using earlier. Um, so this is in the earlier show. She used the applique mat, um, which is really good. So this, this is what you use when you're using bonder webs or any fusible like that that could potentially get stuck to the ironing board or to your um, iron. If you use this, it's a silicon mat and you use it again and again and again and again. And it just protects your ironing board and your mat. Uh, so it's 6 99 and it's a sort of 30 by 31 square. So as I say, repeated use. She also was using earlier on the quilting gloves. Now these are really handy. Um, these are 3 99 So these are 3 99 They're size medium to large, so they sort of fit most hands. And they've got little grippy ends on the digits. And they're on both sides, actually. Um, so you can use these and they kind of grip the fabric as you're moving it. So it saves it, your fingers slipping and trying to catch hold. Very useful to have those. Um, she also talked a lot about Bonder Web in the first hour and used it on both cushions. So Bonder Web is when you want to fuse one fabric to another fabric. And basically it's a double sided glue layer with, on this case, with a paper backing. So you write or draw your designs on the paper backing and then you can cut out. So it's really useful, very versatile, and it just holds all your appliques in place. Now, stitch and tear is another option for when you're doing your stitching afterwards. Why he's been covered up on his mouth, we don't really know. I don't want to try and peel it off in case it breaks, but <laughs> he, maybe he's sticking his tongue out, I don't know. But stitch and tear you use as a backing, so it's a stabiliser. So you'll use stitch and tear to help keeping the stitches uh, straight and not get puckered, not get the fabric puckered as you're stitching. And then once you've stitched, you then tear away, hence stitch and tear. Um, another version would be literally tear away. Um, or the one that Cara used and I personally would have used was the iron-on, medium iron-on interfacing. Um, so you fuse that to the back of your front panel once you've appliqued everything on. Or would you do it before you put the applique I on? I actually um, do it before. So you do it and then put your applique then on. Then put the applique on and then do the um, free motion. Yes, yeah. so that it's, just, it's just adding a little bit more support for when you're doing free motion. When you're doing concentrated stitching, if you don't have support on the underside of the fabric, the fabric can pucker easily. So that's why you put that on there, but it also helps give definition. So that's really useful to have. Also, of course, the friction pen, which we all love to use. So this is a friction pen, still at the early bird price, actually, of one ninety-eight. Don't ask why. It is. So let's just take it. So really, really handy. You can draw on this and then you use your iron to heat away. It takes the heat away. So it takes all the marks off. Um, then we also had, you didn't actually use these because you didn't have a pair handy, did you? But these are, these are called applique or embroidery, precision, these are called precision cut embroidery. Sometimes they're called applique, sometimes they're called duckbill scissors. 
And basically you have, if actually if I get them out of the packet, what you have is on the underside, the under bit, you've got um, a flat sort of duckbill type. And so when you're putting it against fabric, I'm not going to cut paper with it, but I'm going to lay it up on the side. When you're cutting this, you can have it like that. And it's, uh, it prevents you potentially cutting the back of background fabric at the same time. That's the idea of those. And they have got nice sharp points. So they are useful to have, particularly if you like doing applique. Helps you cut without cutting in to your fabric. And finally, of course, we've got the, this is the wadding, the HD40. So this is a fusible. This is what you used, you said, on the bag. You, on the bag. Yes, but yes. I have used it on some of the cushions as well. Oh, and right. I thought if I used it on the cushion, you could actually um, run machine around the border and it would just make the cushion sort of um, more quilted. Yes, which is so you really can nice. do that. Yeah. So with that. And earlier on today, we had our early bird offer. I'm not sure if we've still got it. Um, have we still got that? So we've got the early bird offer, which was the Bozal, uh, half a metre at 9.99, and that's double-sided fusible, and that's great for bag making too. So do make sure you have a look at that. So thank you ever so much, Cara. Thank you. Am I going to, am I going to be able to drive you away from that? Oh, I don't when know. are you back? Do you know when um, you're back? Yes, I'm back on, what's today's date, the 6th? The 19th. 19th, okay. Yes, which is only a little while. I know. <laughs> Very Time's soon, just flying. I by. think I might be on that day. I'm not sure. I never anyway. remember the dates from one week to the next. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully we're so, well, hope everybody else will see you soon. Hopefully I will see you soon. Yes. Soon. Thank so you. So we're just going to go to the break now and then we come back for our final hour, which is our kit bonanza. We've got lots and lots of kits. Some of them we've seen before, most of them you've seen before. Um, but we've brought them all together. So we've got so girls, so we've got some dressmaking, we've got some living in loveliness. So do stay with me and join me again in just a few minutes. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the home page, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the home page, type in your email address, click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. 
Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say, don't get disheartened. Take your um, learning journey slowly. Don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt. Build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Hi, this is our final. I'm sorry we took a little bit longer to come back, but when you see what we've got around here, you won't be surprised. There's so much for me to show you. So I'm going to crack on really quickly because I don't want to waste the time. So I'm standing first with these. This is Living in Loveliness. I'm surrounded by Living in Loveliness and Kerry was here with me last week. And so what have we got? We've got star centerpiece. Let's start with this one. This is a star centerpiece. Look at this. Isn't that nice? Now we don't have this colourway, but we do have some others. So this is what you're going to make, and this is your pack that comes as usual, beautifully. Am I allowed to unwrap any of these? We're, oh, we're unwrapping it all. Oh, a treat. I'm trying to place it really neatly. Because we haven't got Kerry, because normally Kerry then comes along and packs everything back up neatly. So I have to explain to her. So sorry. Look at it. It comes so beautifully packaged, doesn't it? This is oranges and green. So, of course, you get the instructions. You've got the instructions there on how to do everything. And then you get your fabric that you need. So, what you have, these are Liberty fabrics. So I have got three different prints. Can you see these? Three different prints. And then I've also got, so this must be for the background and the back, I'm guessing. And then you've also got, is this heirloom wadding? 80-20, this is 80-20 wadding, beautiful soft wadding. So you've got that. This is um, all what you get in your kit. And this is £21.99. So the instructions and the fabrics. These fabrics are, how much have we got here? So we've got enough to do each bit, each, each of the panels that you need. Now this... Oh, this actually started with a sewing with scraps. 
And so many people kept asking for it. Um, Kerry very kindly then created this lovely kit. Ooh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get that back in, in the neat way it was in there before. Whoops. So that's the orange and green. Let me put that one there. And then we've also got the same kit, but this time it's in. Dun, 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 dun. Just open it up. This time it's in. Oh, look at these. Look at this. It's in purples. So again, you've got the fabric that you need. I'm just going to open that up and see if I. And of course, the instructions. So the three different fabrics to create this. And then you've got the white and you've got the wadding. So this is the purples. So again, it's $21.99. And of course, the instructions are in here too. So the instructions are telling you exactly how to do it all, how to piece it all together and how to create it. Oh, we have a review from Patricia. What does your review say? I hear it says, lovely, excellent fabric, beautiful, presentation and the, the packaging full marks I absolutely agree with you there this is it's so beautifully packaged isn't it look at that I'm getting that one back in a bit more neatly isn't that lovely so that's that that's the purpley one and we have one more colorway of this oh this is in Riley Blake fabric say packed with loveliness lots of love Kerry that's what the little message says on here isn't that sweet ah th so this one if this if this is your favorite oh <laughs> if this is your favorite colorway we've only got less than five of this one <gasps> this is my favorite colorway look at this look at this and look at this mottled pink for your background and then of course the wadding this is gorgeous isn't it I love this one so don't forget what we're making with this is this this table decoration so that in these pinks look these hot pinks this would suit my kitchen so th you get the same amount of the strips of fabric you get are the same amount for each of the strips so it doesn't matter so if you if you want that center one to be the um, the floral one here or if you want it to be this one it's up to you which one you use you could actually if you once you've cut your pieces oh no presume i'm not sure if you can cut them and then lay them out you'd have to look at the instructions but you can certainly decide lay them out together next to each other and decide which you want to be the most prominent one on the top and that decision is yours you can choose so that's one. so that one is now very limited so if you want that one that's definitely my favorite one um, if you want that one, you can. Now, we can do the instructions on their own. Um, don't often do this with Kerry's because Kerry's does tend to do bundles with fabric, etc. But then you can use your own fabrics. So these are just $6.99 to get the instructions on their own. Now, we do have demos from Kerry who's demonstrated this star. Do you know when it was? the 25th of March. So if you look back on the YouTube channel for the 25th of March, you'll see Kerry doing a demo for this. She is a very clear demonstrator. She is lovely. She puts the kits together, she designs everything, and she makes sure that they are simple. The simplest way of putting something together is the way she uses, just to make sure everybody can do it. We've got lots of new customers today, so if you've not heard of Living in Loveliness, what she does is Kerry, she produces these beautiful kits and she sort of started, if you can imagine it as a magazine that comes out monthly, she produces an issue and then she started with very simple, very basic and then she's slowly building up confidence and for people to have confidence and to um, increase their skill levels as they go. This is a quite nice simple one for you to get going. She likes to make them beginner friendly and she will pack all the fabric, put everything together so you've got the right amount of what you need. And then she will also say other things that you need. She's got the sizing on here. I'm just trying to see whether it says a skill level. It doesn't say a skill level because everything is basically beginner friendly um, and things go up slightly as you go along. But this is lovely, isn't it? This is a beautiful table centre. So you could do a Christmas one. No, not yet. No. 
We're talking summer parties. <laughs> this would look lovely for a dinner table there. It would be, because a star obviously makes a good Christmas um, table centre. But that's the star. Now, the, we've also got hexagon bowls. Now, these are what she was doing with me when she was on the other day. And again, we've got three colourways to choose from with these. And the difference, they've got a different shape. We've got circular ones here and we've got um, hexagonal, all from the same pattern. And you can do a fancy little Dresden plate in the centre as well. Look at that. That's instructions are in the pattern. That's appliqued on. Um, what we, we can't do the pattern on its own, I'm afraid. Um, what we do have with this, so you need to get your wadding to go with it. Um, and this is Bozal in here. This is the early bird. So you've got that stiffness on the sides. Just saying, just saying. We're going to put the graphics in. Kat's going to put the patterns in. That half metre would be plenty for those, definitely. And these ones have been done with a softer, uh, like an H640. H, um, and therefore they've got softer sides. So it depends what you want. Depends how you want the finish to look. As I like, I like the the bozel, the rigid, rigidity of the bozel. So this is the first colourway. This is the black. So this is by popular demand. Kerry was asked, because we had this the same the other week, and she was asked for black, but not just plain black, obviously. So she hasn't done plain black. This, I think we think it's Liberty. Let's have a look. Oh, we, oh, you said it is. I thought you said we think. <laughs> it's <laughs> And it says it's black by popular demand. It is black, black. It is Liberty. It's got Liberty written down the side of it. So these, so you've got two pieces here. And this is enough to make all of these bowls, these three bowls here. And it's up to you whether you have... And uh, Kerry was saying the other week, it's nice to have the, your favourite as the inside because that's kind of more visible than the outside. But that's entirely up to you how you do that. And then if you want to do the Dresden plate in the middle you can do that too it's up to you because it depends what you're going to do if you're going to fill it with bits it's sort of a bit pointless but if you're not going to fill it with bits if you're going to if that's going to be a decorative bowl on the side then it looks nice to have an interesting center and look at the template really great place to drop your keys in put that on the sideboard drop your keys in and these are the templates so 100 percent templates nice and easy to use because that's exactly what you need to do to cut them out so all of this comes in here in your instructions and the Liberty Black. It's very popular, Liberty Black. And it is unusual. It's unusual for Liberty to have a dark black background. So that's, a, that's the first pack. Oh, we've only got seven of these available. So if you do like the idea of having that, please grab it now whilst you can. Our next one is I'm just trying to open it gently and carefully oh look at this the blues so again they're Liberty fabric and the instructions of course so you get the same instructions each time full instructions there with the templates and these two beautiful Liberty fabrics lovely prints I'm trying to see I don't, I'm not sure how much you get but you get enough I'm not sure. Let me have a look and see. Hillary hexagon bowls. Cut the pattern, lay the pattern, make sure just in place. Yes, the instructions are lovely. Oh, it says on the back here. So, oh, it's got, I, don't, yeah, I still don't know because it's got fabric one, you cut this, fabric one, you cut this, fabric one, you cut this. So you cut, you cut quite a few bowls out of it. So it doesn't actually say how much you need without because we're not selling the pattern separately you see so it doesn't sort of list it separately because it's a kit less than 10 of these ones available so if you're interested in this colorway now's the time to grab and what are we going to do I think the other thing is I mean these make a nice set you've got the three bowls but actually you know they sort of make nice gifts individually you don't have to give all of them away but I think they're lovely, lovely little sets there. And then finally, the final colourway, it's the pink. 
This is going to be my favourite. Oh, look at this. Oh, I think this was the one that Kelly was doing the demo with. This is pastel pinks. Look at that. Beautiful roses. Really beautiful rose fabric. If you want to watch Kerry's demonstration, are you ready? When? 22nd of April. Okay, 22nd of April was when she demonstrated how to do these. So if you go on the YouTube channel, you can watch back and see it. And she just shows, it's again, the instructions are in there, just goes to show how nice and easy it is to do. You can have, you could have a look, pop for your jewelry, your keys, your jewelry, your trinkets, all, all sorts of little things. There's always a reason to have little pots to put things in. Makes things nice and tidy. So that's that one. Ah, now we do have the wall hanging instructions. That's this one. So we don't have any kits to go with this one. Just the instructions. So this one's the instructions. So this is the one that's behind me. It's behind me. It's a bit, oh, so I grab it because it's a bit, I just put it up there and it's a bit wibbly wobbly up there. Let's grab it. So this is the wall hanging. Lots of pockets. So it's just great that you can add lots of little bits and bobs. Put, hang this up. She just used an old stick or something there, but you can hang this up and you can keep all sorts of work stuff in there. It can be, if you have it in the office, you can put office stuff in, in the sewing room, you could have it, you could put scissors and pens, etc. How wide you make those pockets is up to you, of course. You can divide it however you like. Lots of little pockets and it has here the instructions on how to make it. And what you require are four fat quarters, uh, some foam doweling and a piece of ribbon for this. Speaking of foam, <laughs> we will get it in every time we can. Speaking of foam, your bosal. The bosal that was the early bird this morning, so you get half a metre for 9 99 so it's a discounted price because it's the early bird offer. This would hold this nice and firmly, beautifully. And these are what you're getting. You're just getting the instructions, so you're using your own fabrics, and it says quite clearly on here what you need is four fat quarters you need the bosal or the foam a doweling which is i mean you could actually use uh, an, i mean well she, she has just used a bit of wood here but you could actually use a wooden spoon you could use uh, a piece of um driftwood or something you know I, that's what i did because i bought the mosaic uh, from yarn lane i bought the mosaic um uh, macrame weaving kit and so i went foraging and i found a nice stick to put through the top yeah exactly so sorry about that yeah so this this was one of the first things that Kerry did with us and this is on the 2nd of July last year so again you can still watch the demo of that if you want to um, and you can see and one of the uh, lovely tricks that I think is great that she does she's got binding around the edges and you've got the binding around the edges and then she's attached the binding from the front here with a triple zigzag stitch makes it nice and simple but adds a decorative touch as well so I think it's really lovely so that is another one of the packs we also have the flowers or the hearts oh let's do the hearts first then so we've got these now I haven't got an example of this one have I so this is the heart so this, do you get all of this the, the ribbon the wadding and then let's have a look this makes padded hearts. You'll see the picture. Oh, look at this. So this is what, it's, it's a happy heart garland. Happy heart garland, look. You've got six little hearts hanging down from the ribbon. And look at this. So you could hang this in the garden or you can hang it inside, hang it over a cupboard door. You know you've got a boring cupboard? Hang it over the cupboard door. You get the three different pieces here as well as a coordinating ribbon from which to hang it as well as a small pack of your toy stuffing to stuff them so all you need on top of that is your sewing machine and your thread everything else is included so that's a really lovely that's a lovely colorway isn't it those greens liberty prints 
So that's a really lovely one. And we also have it in, I'm just going to do that for that one. We also have it in two other colourways. So let's look at these. So again, you get the wadding. Ooh, I'm going, which, which, which one is this? It's a, it's a surprise. Oh, look at this one. Which one's this? So this is £12.99. So you get enough fabric and the ribbon and the toy stuffing to make your six little hearts. I think that's really cute. And all the instructions on how to do it. So it's a really lovely little project. It's a lovely little project to make for somebody, but also it's a nice little gift to give to somebody to make. So somebody wants to make something themselves, but they don't know quite what, just want to make something small. And of course, if you actually put some um, lavender or something in, you could hang them in the wardrobe. So you can have lavender in, inside them. And then the final colourway, which you should be able to guess which one this is. It's blue, is it? Oh, it would go with the hexagon blue, look. So we've got, we've got the blue ribbon and we've got the blue fabrics. Now there's less than 10 of this one available. This is a popular one. These lovely hearts. It's the favourite colour for today, this one, at the moment. Let's see whether we change. So that's a really lovely one. And then that comes with the ribbon, the instructions and the toy stuffing. So everything's included that you need to make these little projects. So I think they're really sweet. We're just going to quickly go back to the star instructions because we've had a question. We've had a question. Let's have a look. What's the question? Oh, hold on. Glasses on. <laughs> it says, hi, Wendy. Can you tell me when the star centre was demoed? Oh, yes. I always love your shows. Oh, thank you, Judy. When was it demoed? Did you say? 25th of March. And then if you look again on the 22nd of April, um, to the two dates that we, we know it was on. So 25th of March and the 22nd of April. It, oh, right. It was it previously in a bigger kit. So this is now what you can get. And you use your own fabric for this one, which is lovely. No. You can, use the, you can buy the kits, can't you? Buy those beautiful kits. Now, Alison Marion. Look at these. Aren't they cute? Can you see these? There they are. These lovely flowers. Oh, I think I've got the wrong, kit, wrong flowers for this kit. Let's get these ones in. Look at those. Aren't they lovely? Beautiful. I can't kill these. They would stay alive. So this, this lovely kit here, and you get one, two, three, four, five, six flowers to make. And this comes in this beautiful, I love it when the packaging is so beautiful. So beautifully packaged, you've got your instructions and the templates, full size templates, clear instructions on how to make it all. And then you've got the fabric that you need. And you've also got the stems or the straws. So you've got all the different fabric for the different flower heads. And then this is your leaves. And then this is the wadding that you will put in. They never wilt, they're beautiful, they never wilt, they never age. All you'll have to do is dust them occasionally. So in your kit, you also need, so there's, you do need to get some other equipment, needle and thread, scissors, a point turner. So nothing, nothing difficult to get, nothing hard. Helpful but not essential is some double-sided narrow tape and basting glue if you wish. But this is what you've got to make this lovely little bunch of flowers. You don't get the ribbon, because that's up to you what, to, what ribbon you add to it. But that is really sweet. And you don't get the milk bottle either. So <laughs> you've got to find your own milk bottle. But isn't that lovely? That's a, per a permanent bunch of flowers, that is. With these lovely, lovely little things. This, it's just a really lovely... That would make a quite a nice posy for a wedding, wouldn't it? It would last forever. So you can have that in those printed fabrics. But we also have it 
if you prefer plain. We also have it in plain fabrics. So it's exactly the same idea, the same kit, but this time to make the flame, uh, the plain bunch. 27th of April this was on. Oh, this one's got a ribbon in it. Maybe the other one should have and we just haven't got it. Let me just see what it says. Oh, it does. Yeah, let me just check that. I might have been misleading. Yes, it does say you get a piece of ribbon. It does say in your kit, this is what you get. So you do get the ribbon. I was wrong there. So what you have here is the plain. So you've got your straws again and your different pieces of fabric in the plain colours and then your green for your leaves and stems and the wadding. Look at those. They're so cute, aren't they? So lovely. So you get all of these pieces here. So you just get enough to create the flowers that you need. It was on the 27th of April if you want to watch the demo. 27th of April. So that's on the YouTube if you want to watch that. We did have them in other colourways as well before that. But the 27th of April was the most recent. It was the restock of them. So that's the second kit there of those. So that's everything we've got from Alison Marion today. So we're going to move to the other desk. Leave these. Don't forget, they're still, they are still on the website, of course. So if you think, oh, what was it you just showed me? Please go on the website and have a look. Or you can ask us a question. Uh, oh, yes, Alison, Alison has actually said, Alison is watching, and she said there should be a piece of wood, ribbon, Wendy. Yes, we have realised. Sorry about that, Alison. We realised at the last minute there should have been a piece of ribbon because it wasn't in our sample pack, which happens. So now I'm over here. I have to leave my flowers behind. It's a bit much, isn't it? So I've got balloons behind me, but not the flowers. Yes, let's start with this. This is a Love From Beth pattern. And what it is, is it's really, this is really, an, um, there's a, there's a, it's a sunburst purse. It's just a simple patchworking technique. It says experience, I say simple, so maybe I shouldn't. So it's a patchworking technique. And it's just a really lovely little purse. For all sorts, of, this could be your cosmetic bag. It could be anything. You could add a little strap if you wanted to add a little strap, make it into a little night purse. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Sorry about that, I had to have a quick sneeze. Um, yes, yeah, so this is really like Sunburst Purse by Beth Studley. The finished size is eight by five and a half inches. And you get the instructions on how to make it all um, as well um, as the what you need. So you need 30 by seven inches of main fabric um, and then you need lining fabric and you need iron on interfacing. So it's, it is something you could make from scraps or if you've got bits of fat quarters left over, um, that's what you can do. Six coordinating fabrics for the sunburst feature. So this is really is a time of using up all your little bits and pieces. So this is £6.50. So we've done it in denim, denim, but you can do it in whatever. You've got a good sort of medium weight uh, fabric to create the shaping of that. And again, going back to good old Bosel, um, she said use uh, medium weight interfacing, but if you used the bows or the sewing one, if you don't want to use the fusible or use the fusible but don't fuse, you'll get a more rigid bag. We obviously, we've, we've stuffed this with wadding just to show because it's quite a soft purse. Mm. This is great for cosmetics, for your jewellery when you're going away somewhere. Um, anything like that you might want to take out. If you make it with the, the bosel in, in as the wadding, you'll then find that it has a more structure to it. And as Kat said, you could put a handle to it. You could make it into a little evening bag. So that's up to you. That's what makes it. Oh, those metallic motors we had earlier. Yes. Wouldn't they look glorious in this? That's lovely. So that is Love From Beth. It's eight inches by five and a half inches and it's a sunburst purse. This was demoed on the 11th of March. So if you wanted to look back at the demo for it, it was on the 11th of March. 
Now we also have another bag. This, the, this, this one, it, it just looks, it kind of like goes, doesn't it, really? I know. You wouldn't even notice if I had this on my arm as I walked out. Isn't that gorgeous? That is really lovely. So it's taking a very simple bag shape and creating a fiesta bag because of the lovely design all the way around it. Again, it's an experience. It's experience quilting or patchworking. Um, and it, it's only really because it's obviously lots of little triangles. You're working with lots of little pieces. But the instructions are very clear. They tell you exactly how to do it all. It tells you exactly all the requirements you need. I'm just going to open these instructions with great care just so I can show you what you're getting in these instructions. Um, because I think it's important, it's £6.50 for this pattern to create this. Let's have a look at what you get for that, because that doesn't sound too bad to me. And if you get really good instructions, look at this. I knew they would be, you see. You've got all these clear instructions and you've got the templates, which are so important. So you, you can cut out nice and neatly what you need tells you how to do it all, how to cut it, cut on the fold, etc. Cut on the solid line, doesn't leave anything to chance, makes it very clear how you cut it out. This was demonstrated on the 31st of March. So if you wanted to look at the demonstration uh, to see how it goes, 31st of March. Finish size of this lovely Fiesta bag is 10 by 10 by four inches, so sort of 10 high, 10 wide, four width. So you can get a lot in there. It's a lovely, it's like a little messenger bag, isn't it? So again, if you wanted to give more structure, good old Bozal. I've got to keep on shoehorning that one in now. So I just put the instructions back in the little envelope. And then we can go on to one of our other lovely patterns. These are our two Love From Beth patterns. As I say they've, they've all been shown before, um, but they, we've got some, we've got some sort of extra stock that we've got here. We've got them ready for you because we know they're very popular. So we're just going to go to a, a quick video clip so you can see something. And then we'll be back with you in just a couple of seconds. Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. I try not to move too far. Can you hear me now? Okay, brilliant. Hi, sorry, welcome back. A little, little um, issue with the microphone there. So I'm back here. I know um, you might not want to constantly hear me talking, but it's better than just seeing my mouth moving, nothing coming out. So let's do some sew girl patterns next. If anybody has been watching the Great British Sewing Bee, I hope it's given you an idea to get cracking on some dressmaking. So we've got some lovely sew girl patterns. We're going to start, so we've got a whole mixture here. We've got dresses, hats and bag. So we're going to start with the, I, know, I, I say we're going to start with the, I have trouble saying this word, Sicily. Cecily dress, Cecily dress. So this is sizes eight to 20, so nice good size range there. And it's suitable for intermediate sewers. So people who have had a little bit of experience with sewing before. It's a nice, easy fit design. And in fact, I've got two examples behind me. 
There's two examples from behind me to show you. And the lovely thing with this, I don't think we've got an open pattern here, but the, the, um, the pattern instructions are very, very clear and easy to follow. On the back of the envelope, we have the line drawing, so they show you what it's going to look like. Because sometimes the photography on the front, can, you, you cannot see detail. So look at the line drawings. They tell you about the sizes. So when I say it's size, um, whatever I said it was, 8 to 20, that means in measurement size, it's 32 inch bust to a 44 inch bust. So don't think of your size as your high street size. Think of your measurements, and that's what you're looking at there. And then it's also got the finished garment sizes. So for that, 32 inch bust to size eight will finish at 34. So you've got two inches of ease in the bust area. And it's always worth knowing that because at least it, what it means is you know how closely fitted it's supposed to be. And it tells you how much fabric you need as well. It's got a little description. And you can also go to um, sewgirlblog.com for a photo step-by-step -step instructions and hacks. And I love the fact that she does the hacks. And of course, we have a YouTube demonstration from the 26th of November. So if you want this, that would have been with Fiona, who is Sew Girl. She is a designer. Um, if you want to make this very simple, easy to wear dress. This would look so lovely. And some of those prints that we had earlier on, those chili peppers, can you imagine chili peppers? Really lovely, it would be flattering and you can have this lovely easy wear dress. Very, very nice, I like that. Sizes eight to 20. Another so I want to go for the hat. The reason I'm going for the hat is because of course, Great British Sewing Bee, we had the baker cap um, last week and this isn't a baker cap, but it's very, very similar. It's a Chelsea girl hat, so actually it's more for uh, the girlies than the boys. So it's a start. It's a cap pattern, a lined hat with a generous peak and a crown made of segments, just as it had been with a self-covered button on the top. It tells you what sort of fabrics that you need and the clear instructions all the way through with the pattern pieces are in here. And it tells you what the different sizes are. So again, measure the diameter of your head to decide which size you would need to make. So it's nice, it's a, it's a lovely hat, it's a bit different and it will look lovely in denim. And it's, it's what it's suggesting actually, it suggests that you use corduroy, tweed, denim or cotton. Oh, there's, there's Fiona modelling it, she's coming up modelling the hat, look. Oh, it's the trousers, <laughs> trousers and the hat. Have we got those? We haven't got those trousers. So that's another one of her patterns. We haven't got that here today, but we have done it before, obviously. And then she's going to pop the hat on. This, I do like this hat, actually. I do, it is stylish. That's a nice stylish hat there. So this is it. So that is just, if you want to do something, AKA the Great British Sewing Bee, here's your pattern to make this really stylish hat. It tells you how much fabric you need on the back of the pattern. So the back of the pattern, it says, so um, depending on the width of the fabric, you need 50 to 60 centimetres. That's all, 50 to 60 centimetres. And then you also need lining, interfacing and wadding, etc., for the crown and the band, etc. So it's all clearly in, uh, written on there what you need. Oh yes, I like this. Because this is, this gets fabric, you get, oh. This is the Boho Shoulder Bag or Cosmetics Pouch Kit. This is lovely. So this is a lined bag. I mean, it's just, it's a lovely bag and you can use it for what you like. Um, she's trying to stop me getting in here. This is, is it, is it that code? KPS 508. This says Boho Red, um, but, they're trying to stop me getting into it. I'm going to manage. I'm going to squeeze these out the side. So that's the bag you're getting there. Isn't that lovely? That's the colour you're getting. So what you have in here 
It's a lined shoulder and cosmetic bag with zip, inner pocket and tissue holder. So you're getting both in there. And that's, that's all, oh, you've, you've even got the tissues. Um, let me just very carefully open this. Do it carefully enough, you can seal it back up. And you never know I've been in it. Because I want to show you the colours, because the colours aren't quite the same as on the picture. So what you're getting, you get the I love the fact you get the tissues. You get some thread. You get your fabrics. You've got denim. You've got a print. Ooh. Got some hardware in there, so that's obviously the clasp and a spotted. And of course, you get the full instructions. Do you get the instructions here as well as the templates? So nice and clear how to make, and you get everything you need to make. So the colour you're getting is this colour here. Okay, which is lovely, isn't it? Very pretty with the denim. There are two other colourways as well. So this has all got to go back in. I'm just going to put that there. This is the red star flower version. I'm just going to put that all back on there like that. So we can put it away neatly in a minute. And then let's look at the other two versions we have. So this one is Boho Pink YDS506. Ah, this one's easier to get into. So this is the pink, so it's the same, I'm going to have to carefully open it because you need to see the fabrics. Uh, it's the same sort of kit, you've got the zip, the thread, the tissue pack, I love the fact you've got the tissue pack in there, um, and, the, and the fabrics that you need. So these are the two fabrics this time. Isn't that pretty, this one? Again, what do you think? I think it, you know, it would work. So this is really nice. So you get that, you get your print, the hardware in there, and you also get the denim and the spot. So you can make your two bags with this. Let's read this little note. Oh, it tells you what it includes. It tells you the pre-washing is advised. Um, you've got African Dutch wax fabric. I did think that was. So that's a wax fabric. You've got the spot lining. You've got a slider and, a rec and rectangular rings, a zip, reel of thread, a tissue pack, and an instruction booklet with templates. That's what you get in there, all of that, in that pack for $29.99. We have one final colourway in this, this bag, this pattern. So you're getting the pattern as, and the fabric this time. And this is this one. This is blue and mustard. So this time, oh, look at this one. Stunning. So again, let's just open it up. See how careful I am to open it up. And again, you're getting your African, you get your denim, your spot, the zip, the thread, the tissues, but you're also getting this blue and orange African wax print. So it's a nice staple. Isn't that beautiful? And that's all to make this lovely boho bag we've got here. Oh, that's just lovely. And that's the print you're using this time. So really very, very nice. Very nice. So $29.99 and that's for this colourway. So everything you need is in the bag, even the tissues, which I think is fabulous. We're going to go to the other side now, and I'm going to show you a few more things. Um, ah, so we're going to this one here. Ah, this is this is from Yvonne. This is Village Fabrics. This was a design, and again. Um, she she did this when I was on. So do you remember this is fourteen ninety nine, and you get four patterns for four variations of these Japanese wall hangings. And so this is just the pattern with the four variations. And you get let's have a look. You get the templates and, and the instructions, of course. Yvonne is incredibly knowledgeable. She she has been around in quilting for many, many, many years. 
So you get, look at this, lots of instructions. 23rd of March, which she was in to do this demo. So if you wanted to look back. So you've got here all of the instructions on how, and you've got the templates. And this was how to do, I remember her doing this actually, doing these prairie points. Um, and these lovely, look at these lovely dragonflies. So this is, this is really one to watch back. She's very calm, very informative. She knows what she's doing. And this is all very clear. Look, it tells you exactly how to put it all together. And then you also have more details, pictures, these big prints. So if you want to follow the layout exactly, you can do this all of these different parts of it, the design sheets of how to put it all together. And then you've got four, as I say, four different patterns in this, this pack. So four different on, on the theme. So they're all of these Japanese wall hangings, which are 12 by 20 and a half inches. 23rd of March is when they were last demonstrated. We've got less than 20, so if you are interested in these, bear that in mind. You get all four of the designs that I've just shown you on here in this pack with the detailed instructions on how to create them. We have another one from Village Fabrics, which, let me just close that up. Let's look at this big one. This looks interesting. Oh, this one's got fabric in it. This is called Strawberry Hearts. So this is the kit. It's um, a wall hanging again, 14 by 42 inches, difficulty level just two reels, so sort of beginner intermediate. Look at these fabrics. Aren't they gorgeous? I'm opening it carefully. 24th of November was when this was last demonstrated. And in it, you get obviously, you get the instructions on how to create it, but you also get the fabric that you need. So this is this lovely little print with all the strawberries. And this is all put together by Village Fabrics. So this is all is their kit that they've put together. So you've got one, two, three different reds. And then you've got a cream background, another little dotty cream. It's so lovely with all these different colours. And it's all been beautifully coordinated. This is what we like to see. So you haven't got to think about how to coordinate all this. It's all done for you. So this is Strawberry Hearts with a lovely strawberry fabric as a nice centre bit, center bit. Isn't that lovely? A little strawberry fabric. Strawberries, apples. Yes, it's just strawberries and apples, isn't it? Do you think it's an apple? It's not a tomato, is it? So strawberries and apples there. Isn't that gorgeous? All to make this lovely table runner. This is lovely. This is one you should make now for June. Isn't June when all the strawberries come, isn't it? Um, we also have, we've got two of these. So I'll bring them both. There's a rail fence. So rail fence is the design. It's like a log cabin, but it's called rail fence. It's a different patchwork technique. And we have two kits here. We've got a pastel one and a darker one. So I'll start pastel. So the finished size of this is 18 by 18 inches. And look at all these beautiful fabrics in here. Can you see them all? All these fabrics to make this cushion with the clear instructions. This is 15.99 and you've got the fabrics here to make the cushion front. Look at that. It's a really good one. If you want to build up techniques, if you've not done this technique before, um, the clear instructions all the way through will show you exactly how to do it. And then once you've done this, I mean, this is a cushion cover, but you could use this as a panel in a quilt and you could repeat it or you could do a different panel next to it. So you can actually do like a sampler quilt. So you could have different panels, different techniques on each piece. 26th of January was when it was originally on air. So if you wanted to look back, at it's Yvonne's demonstration, 26th of January. Same pattern, but in a different colourway. So this is more of brights. These are the colours that you get with this one. Look at these, aren't they lovely? So again, you get enough fabric to do all of the cushion front here and the clear instructions on how to do it. So get this lovely finish. Rail fence. So it has a design and then it has got the black border there. And it's got little the corners are different too. It's just really lovely. 
$15.99 for the whole kit. So it's a really good price for the whole kit there. And then we also have, I've got one more here from Yvonne. Uh, this, this one, now this is one that she, again, she actually um, showed how to make some of this when I was last with her. Um, this one came on 23rd of March and you've got everything you need, look, to make these pieces, including the instructions. Japanese needle case and pin cushion. The pin cushion was so sweet. And she also, she made these, um, and I'll show you how, these little fabric beads, sort of little beads on the end of your tails. And the instructions all here, nice and clear, with your templates. And this, is, this was how to make those little sort of buds, beaded, fabric beaded buds. Everything that she does with these, the Japanese inspired, are because she's got this love of Jap Japan. And so she makes all of these beautiful things. Um, and she uses Japanese inspired fabric, if not Japanese fabric. So the fabrics you get with this one is this little floral. That if I just turn that back over so you can see what you're making. So you're getting the little floral, a little bit of pink. Um, we've got some, in, some wadding, interfacing wad wadding, and then we've got the outer, which is a sort of linen look with a kind of weave in it, an open weave in it. So that is another one. We have got some more So Girl patterns on the website, so don't miss those. We haven't got time to go through them all, but they are on the website. We have got a lovely skirt, a nice roomy um, coat dress, and some dungarees. So do have a look at those because they are there, they are available now. But before I go today, there's a couple things to do. One is, I've um, mentioned it a few times, this is our early bird, our early bird special, 9.99 for a half metre, which is 150 centimetres wide, remember? So it's nice and wide. That's the width you're going to get. That's 100 metres, sorry. That's half a metre of 150 centimetres wide. And if you want to buy multiples of it, you will get a big piece. So you just put in, if you feel you want to buy two metres of this, then just put in four times the half metre to get it. It's 9.99 per half metre, which is a saving today. It's a special price for today because it's our early bird offer. This is a uh, double-sided fusible. You don't have to use the fusible bit if you don't want to but you can and it, it fuses the two fabrics together so you put them wrong side towards the bosal, fuse and then you can use bias binding to neaten the edges on the outside. So you can make something very quickly and simple. Um, bag making, I mean if you saw those hexagon uh, trays that we had earlier, the bag that Cara had done, anything like that, it gives structure, it holds its shape so it's really good. Um, and I said actually I would I would quite like to do this with Bosal in it rather than just fusible interfacing. Again, because what I'm thinking is you could make it into a nice little evening bag with a, with a chain strap um, and you've got a nice little bag. It's, an, it's big enough to pop your phone, your lippy, credit card, etc. in there just to keep you and maybe a brush or a no, little one, little comb or something if you need. And it, it's actually lovely to be able to buy Bosal off the off the roll so you buy as much as you want or as little as you want when it's got this this good price this is really good it's a, it's a sort of sponge it's very easy to sew and this is definitely my wadding of choice for many many of the projects that i'm doing at the moment it is supposed to be sewn the sewing machine will go through it beautifully um, some other stiffening type of uh, interfaces that you use for bags can be more difficult to feed through a sewing machine this is easy, not a problem whatsoever. So this is really lovely stuff, 9 99 for half a metre. Or, of course, you can buy multiples. So, menu for tomorrow. So join me again tomorrow. I have got the lovely Catherine Wright joining me. We've got some love from Beth, Cabin Crosses Quilt. So we had some love from Beth things today. So we've got some more love from Beth tomorrow. And Catherine Wright's going to do some demos. She's a multi-talented lady. At nine o'clock, we've got floral fabrics, so lots of lovely prints there. And then, interestingly, at 10, we've got Just Lemons with Catherine Wright. This is a new fabric range, so she will be demoing some makes with that. 
Um, and then at 11 o'clock, we've got create, Creative Grid Rulers. So these are the, the wonderful rulers that you use when you're doing lots of patchwork, uh, acrylic rulers, and they have different shapes, different size, markings on them. We've got them back in stock. Um, they're always very, very popular. They're brilliant rulers. And then finally at 12, we've got Yarn Lane Tunisian Crochet with Catherine Wright. I told you she's multi-talented. It's one of those lovely techniques and she's going to take us through it and we'll have some bits and bobs to sell to go along with that. Oh, and we've got to be, you've got to be here for the early bird tomorrow. I don't yet know what it is, so I will be here. <laughs> but I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a lovely afternoon.